Lesson 69. <laughs> uh, you're... Ugh, you can't remember. Blah, blah, shut up. You think... No, you are happy. He is very dizzy. He is very dizzy, and the ground is not. So Ronbu flops down, or he tries to. But his legs are a little confused on how to, um... How to do that, exactly. So he kind of falls on his ass. It doesn't hurt or anything. It hurts worse when Dream slings him across the room like a giant frisbee. And Rambu starts laughing so hard, imagining himself zipping through the air like a plastic disc. He tips back entirely. The grass is cool and sweet, and he rolls over to press his face into it, humming contentedly as the silky strands tickle at his face. Warm, rich smell of earth stuck in his nose, and he's absentmindedly rubbing his cheek across it when something tumbles down next to him. Did you mean to sit down? The arms ask him, and whoa, Rambu didn't know arms could talk. What an exceptional arm that is. But then something like sense trickles back into his heavy, warm mind, and he remembers that arms are usually attached to things with mouths. His eyes laboriously drag up the arm, skirt over shoulders and the tip of a stubborn chin, finally find a face smiling down at him, night-dark eyes, dimples in his cheeks, high as sunshine. And Rambu grins like an idiot, drawling out long and messy. Maybe... I don't know. <laughs> okay, I think that's enough wine for you, mister. Sunshine tells him trying to be stern, but he's giggling a little, and that just makes Ronbu giggle. Doesn't know what's so funny, but he turns to hide his face in the sweet, soft grass, and mumbles contentedly. It's okay, I'm kind of tired anyway. What? No, Boo, wake up! Sunshine protests loudly, but Ronbu just pretends to sleep makes fake snoring noises until there's hands pushing and slapping at him, and is completely unhelpful as he's rolled onto his back. Rambu has half a thought of keeping his masterful charade up, but then his eyes drift to the sky overhead, and he completely forgets about anything besides the universe blazing above him. Oh. He breathes, body going pliant and lax, like whenever you see something so awe-inspiring and humbling, it reminds you of how small you are in the face of everything else. It's not a bad feeling. Doesn't make Ronbu feel sad about himself, it's just like seeing the trailing arm of a galaxy for the first time. Watching nebula clouds drift apart and billow together again out in deep space. A gentle reminder that life is greater than any of them could possibly know. Beautiful, isn't it? Sunshine sighs, quietly, laying back as well, one set of arms tucked behind his head, the other clasped together over his abdomen. I used to come out here and lay like this all the time in the summer, just dreaming. About what? Rambu asks, equally subdued, lightheaded to the point that he feels like he might be floating a little sticks a hand out and tries to see if he can catch some of the stars in the palm of his hand. A lot of things. Flying, mostly. Traveling the stars, finding... finding someone to go with me. Sunshine hushes. Words drifting out to hang, lazy and hazy in between them. Close enough to touch, to reach out and bridge that gap. Just like the space between their chairs. Rambu wonders if he'd have an easier time catching them than the universe above him. So far away, despite how weightless he feels. Fingers swiping through nothing but empty air in their attempt to touch the stars. I went with you. I'd go with you anywhere. Rambu mumbles, letting his arm fall back to the earth with a thud, resting relaxed in between where they're barely sitting apart. And with a breathy chuckle, sunshine hums. Yeah. Yeah, you did. It's funny. Guess I've been dreaming of you my whole life, huh? Rambu's remembering, sitting up on the roof of his dorm, then, 
gazing up at the night sky that was dulled by the amount of lights in Mahari, but thinking it beautiful nonetheless. All huddled into himself, wishing for things he didn't think he was allowed to want. At least, until there was a hand held out for him. Entire galaxy in his smile, deep dark of space opening before you like a precious gift. Come with me. I think... I think I was dreaming of you too. Rambu says, slow and syrupy thick, claws digging into the ground a little, enjoys the way the earth feels under the pads of his fingers, the sounds of bugs singing giddily in the night, low, rumbling echo that starts up in his own chest like ship engines kicking on, and overhead, the stars dip and sway, dance around one another like figures in a cobblestone courtyard, hands locked and caught together, keeping each other in orbit, keeping each other steady. And Rambu is so overwhelmingly happy, has never felt more right in his skin, with his bones, with himself, blows out a content gust of air, and likes to think flecks of shining stars go with it. May sunshine? Rambu exhales gently, sends all the bright points in the sky skittering away from him, Feels like he's walking on air, on water, on the inky abyss. The universe arching over him and spiraling past. Galaxies in its skin and stars shuddering to life at its core. And there's nothing but breathless devotion in his chest, seeing the way the cosmos envelops him like a hug. I love you. I love you too. The stars sing. The nebulas murmur. The void itself washing over his feet past his knees, rocking him like he's a child again, like he's her child again. Auroras burning in the sky overhead, comets streaking past. Hi, Mama. And when a hand finds his, touches at him with fingers that burn and rejoice like the hottest of star cores, Rambu thinks the universe isn't that far out of reach after all. Love is a beautiful thing. The stars are a beautiful thing. Life is a beautiful thing. Coming awake almost feels like a dream. He's so wonderfully warm and heavy. Rambu's not sure he's ever going to be moving again. Huffs out a contented breath that deepens into a delighted hum, feeling something drag through his hair. It's fingers. There's fingers in his hair detangling it gently and scratching lightly around the base of his horns. A slow, even heartbeat right under his ear, arms around his waist holding him close, lavender and machine oil. Arambu mumbles sleepily. Mm, dreaming. Nope. A subdued but cheery voice says, popping the P with emphasis, scratches behind his ear, and that really sets Rambu off purring. Twisting his head to follow the contact, can hear the words rumbling through the chest under him. Want to try again? Mm, hallucination? Rambu suggests, barely awake, almost asleep again with the hand petting through his hair. Smiles mushily when the surface he's lying on bounces with breathy laughter. <laughs> Wrong again. You're zero for two, boo. Only got one more shot. Stretching languidly, and making a high-pitched noise to accompany it, Rambu shifts back enough so he can actually see something besides colorful fabric and a pale gray t-shirt. Looks up and asks, whisper soft, You're real, then? Very. Tubbo says with a sleepy smile. Hair all rumpled and sticking out like he's just shocked himself. Sweet set to his face. And his last free hand comes up. Cups Rambu's cheek gently and thumbs under his eye. Morning, husband. Automatically, the tuft on the end of Rambu's tail fluffs out. Startled, happy trill rolling out of his mouth. And he knows there's probably a dark cast over his cheeks. The tips of his ears but wow, it really sure is something hearing Tubbo say that. I, um, 
yeah, hi, I, uh, uh g- good morning to, um, t- to you too, husband. Rambu stammers out bashfully, and Tubbo just laughs loudly. <laughs> That's hilarious. You can tell me like, oh, I see all the stars in your eyes. You mean more than the galaxy to me, straight-faced. But calling me husband gets you all stuttery. That's amazing. Shut up. I do not like you. Rambu stresses, overly haughty. Attempts to glare down his nose at where Tubbo is still snickering. Doesn't think he manages very well. Especially not when a hand wraps around his braid. Can feel his expression soften into something no less than adoring. I'm gonna call bullshit on that one, Stella. Tubbo hums, and gives his braid a light tug, fingers drifting down to fiddle with the bead on the end, eyes tracing gentle shapes over it. And the look on his face is going to live in Rambu's head for the rest of his life. You know, I didn't realize how much I missed seeing your hair like this. Oh, what a horrible thing to say. What a stupid... Horrible, absolutely lovely thing to say. Arambu feels his heart flip delightedly in his chest, manages to get a hand free, and snakes it up to where Tubbo's braid is getting lost in his mop of hair. Thumbs at it, gently. Me too. It settles into a comfortable quiet after that, soft hush of late morning only broken by the occasional clicking of claws against the floorboards out in the hallway. Dull noises echoing through the house that are probably Sisson making breakfast. None of this seems real. It's a little too perfect. Seems a little too fabricated. But Rambu can feel the warm, grounding sensation of skin-heated tungsten under his fingertips. Gentle, even beating of Tubbo's heart, echoing back through where they're laying together. This... this is real. Somehow... Some way. And Rambu is honestly still struggling to wrap his head around the idea that last night happened. That he and Tubbo sat out on a rock under the stars and said, I love you, both fully understanding what that meant this time. He made me a bead, Rambu thinks for probably the one hundredth time, still just as deliriously confused and happy as last night, when Tubbo first held it out in offering, promised you everything. Outstretched hand, come fly with me, build a home with me, marry me. Rambu had given Tubbo the proper response after their braids were done, when they sat side by side, hands intertwined, heads bent together. The traditional words floated out into the dark quiet of the night, sounding like they were only ever meant to be spoken under starlight, hand in hand. I will love you in the way no one else can. And it was just the two of them. It was always supposed to be just the two of them. There never would have been anyone else. They were made to care for and love the other. Two pieces of the universe that recognize one another and love one another. And Rambu has never felt more like he's belonged, like he finally fits, than right now. Head nestled on Tubbo's shoulder, just existing and enjoying each other's presence. So, got anything you want to do today? Tubbo asks, trying for nonchalance, but it sounds like he has an idea already. And Rambu wiggles his tail around, batting it softly into Tubbo's leg while he hums. I didn't really have any plans in mind. Why? Is there something you want to do? I... yeah. Tubbo says. Shifts so they can see each other better and there's red creeping up his face. But he doesn't look away. Cheeks smooshed into the arm he has resting under his head. I was thinking we could, um, we could get our ears pierced. Uh, well, uh, I can since, y- you know, but yeah. Oh, and then we should maybe probably tell my mom. He says that last part all in a rush, and Rambu nearly misses it, still hung up on get our ears pierced. He wants to get his ears pierced. He wants to stay. But then the rest of it registers, and his pulse jumps up quickly, nervously tapping against his ribs. Everything Rambu knows about Melifera culture is suddenly flying past in his mind, 
and he frantically combs through it, trying to see if there's anything on marriage customs that he's missed. Knows it's customary on some planets to ask permission first. So was he supposed to ask Sisson before marrying Tubbo? But Tubbo proposed first this time anyway. Oh, wait, shit. They're not even technically married under Apian law. S so that makes them engaged? Maybe? Ugh, he doesn't know. And he hates not knowing. Still muddling through everything when there's a warm touch at his forehead. Fingers pressing into his skin and dragging upwards, pulling his eyebrows up with it. Stop it. Stop overthinking. Tubbo chides, wrapping him lightly on the forehead. Smooths that hand into Ronbu's hair before he can start complaining. Ronbu, you absolute goon, she is going to be so excited. I don't think you're prepared for the amount of high-pitched screeching that is going to happen. I... Uh, yeah? Ronbu asks, shakily, tipping his head into Tubbo's hand and nuzzling at his palm. Purrs happily when fingers run up the length of his horn. Doesn't really feel much like anything, it's just comforting. Making a noise of affirmation, Tubbo draws his fingers back down and rests his hand lightly on the side of Ronbu's neck, twiddling with the long strands of his hair. Yes. And honestly, she's going to give you one thousand hugs, tell you how happy she is that you're going to be part of the family. And then she'll whack me upside the head and yell at me for not asking you sooner. That makes Rambu giggle a little. Can picture it happening. But then the implications sink in. Not asking sooner? Did he tell her? Knowing look? Never said he was handsome? Does she know? And he asks, soft and nervous, over the answer. D did, uh, d does she know about before? About... Last time? Last time? Uh, oh! Oh, no, no, I didn't, uh, tell her anything specific. Tubbo says, fingers picking distractedly with some loose threads of the hammock. And where the tips of his ears stick out of his hair a little, they're bright red. I, um, I figured that was just between us. Private. B but I did tell her we had, like, a falling out. I didn't blame you or anything, promise. I told her it was my fault, and it was the furthest thing from your fault. Rambu huffs, reaches out, and fits his fingers under Tubbo's chin, gently presses until he'll look up. How could it ever be your fault? I'm the one that married you without consent. Ugh, okay. Look, you should have explained. I should have asked. I get it. B but we got it sorted. Can we just go back to being happy we both know we're married now? Tubbo whines, a pitiful, pleading expression on his face he's making look ridiculous on purpose. Draws out long and plaintive. You have to be nice to me, I'm the birthday boy. That was yesterday. Rambu reminds him primly, letting go of his chin to bap his nose a few times. And Tubbo sticks his tongue out, which only prompts Rambu to do it again. Truthfully, though, Rambu shouldn't be so worried over how Sisson's going to take the news. Nor how the rest of the family will. Because no one even batted an eye last night, and the two of them were anything but subtle. They disappeared into the night, came back over an hour later hand in hand, sat closer than they had been before all evening, hands obviously laced under the table while everyone sang Tubbo happy birthday. And not a single person said anything acted like nothing was off. Rambu didn't have space in his head at the time to worry over what everyone else might think, could only stare in disbelieving awe at the braid in Tubbo's hair, kept reaching up to touch his own, doesn't think he uttered a coherent sentence until after presents or cake, and... Wait. Wait! Presents! Sitting by Tubbo at the long kitchen table, ankles hooked together, mind lost in tracing designs on the back of his lower right hand, over scars and smooth skin alike. Feels like you're forgetting something. Watching him tear through colorful paper, what are you- Wait, wait, you forgot- You forgot his- Present. I, I forgot your birthday present! Rambu yelps, hand immediately stilling in its game of poking Tubbo in various spots around his face, giving Tubbo an opportunity to win his game of trying to bite Rambu's finger. Nips him quick before Rambu is rolling out of the hammock. 
For all that it's a seemingly simple thing, Rambu always struggles getting into and out of it. Snags his foot on loose cloth now, and staggers across the room. Doesn't fall this time, though. Starts digging through his duffel while Tubbo laughs at his back. Wow, the one thing you've ever forgotten, and it's my birthday present. I'm wounded, husband, absolutely destroyed. Tubbo crows, overly pleased. Must see the way Ronbu's hands stutter excitedly at the word husband. And laughs, soaring and fond. Hey, I was a little preoccupied last night. I I'd just gotten married. Rambu grouses, affectionately. Finally finds the dumb tube and hauls it out of a tangle of clothes. Plagued with apprehension and nerves as he gets to his feet. He knows it doesn't even come close to what Tubbo did for his name day. But he'd been grasping at straws. Hard to find something that didn't look like a present a spouse would give. Reminds himself, again, that Ozzy said it was perfect. Tubbo's sitting up in the hammock when Rambu turns around, legs dangling over the side, bare toes not even close to skimming the floorboards. He cocks his head inquisitively as Rambu shyly holds out the poster tube, takes it in his upper set of hands and starts trying to work the cap off. I, um, it's nothing much. I just, I wanted to do something. Rambu awkwardly rubs at the back of his neck, eyes darting away and back to Tubbo rapidly, in parts excited to see his reaction and also dreading it. Finally getting the cap free with a quiet pop, Tubbo shuffles out the rolled-up sheet of paper, very carefully starts opening it, and then just stops. His eyes go wide, mouth dropping open a little. Spreads it the rest of the way out and looks across the whole thing with an incredulous smile quirking his lips up. Holy shit. Did you make this? Tubbo breathes, glancing back up at Ronbu briefly, before going back to raking his eyes over the drawing. And shrugging bashfully, Ronbu stammers. I, uh, yeah. Queen's past. No real talent in my ass. Tubbo huffs, exasperated, but undeniably fond. Fingers gentle as he works on flattening the paper. Others set tracing carefully over clean lines and sharp angles. It didn't take Ronbu long to figure out what he wanted to draw, but it took days to get the level of complexity he wanted. It's a good-sized sheet of poster paper. Let Ronbu get hyper-detailed like he couldn't when he was drawing on his arms and there might be some slight inaccuracies, but he was working purely from memory. Couldn't sneak back down into the repair bay while Tubbo was there, unless he wanted to ruin the surprise. Sitting squarely in the middle of the paper is, in Rondo's opinion, a pretty accurate, expanded diagram of one of the Asachi's main engines. Sections of it, pulled away and staggered off to the sides to expose the inner workings. Different areas of the engine are shaded in with vivid matte colors, copying a kind of color-blocking style Rambu knows Tubbo is fond of. Reds, oranges, and grays popping brightly off the white paper. Do you like it? Rambu hedges, tapping his fingers together and apart, worries stoking to life like embers in a stove. Not enough. Not good enough. Everything he's done for you and this is all you did for him? Ungrateful, entitled brat, think that. But Tubbo smiles at him like the sun. This is one of the best things I've ever gotten. I love it so much, Stelle. Tubbo enthuses gently, rolls the poster back up and tucks it safely into its tube before getting to his feet. Pads over to Ronbu and only hesitates the slightest amount reaching out for him. A set of arms settle around his waist, sling over the back of his neck and Rambu sways forwards, helplessly. Moon caught up in a gravitational pull. But that's okay. That's all right. Nowhere else you'd rather be. Tubbo hushing, quietly. You're too kind to me. I... Thank you. For giving me a second chance. For loving me as much as you do. It's not like it's an arduous thing. I've told you before. Loving you is so easy. Rambu murmurs gently, takes a few steps forwards, 
relishing the way Tubbo's arms settle around him. And with a shaky laugh, Tubbo says, Summersoft, It sounds so even and smooth coming out of his mouth, like he's been practicing it. And Rambu can see, then, in his mind, Tubbo down in the repair bay working on the Asachi, listening to pronunciation videos instead of music. Something gooey and warm rushes out through Rambu's ribs, trickles in between the gaps, thinks it might be his own heart melting away as he leans down, taps their foreheads together. Atiyamamote, Tubbo. This is it. This is where you're supposed to be. Rambu thinks with a deep, contented sigh, twisting into the contact in a continuous, misguided attempt to knock their horns together. Purrs rumbling to life, feeling antenna brush at him. Nowhere else in the galaxy will ever make sense without him there. Love him. Love him so much. And he loves you. Nebula and protostars and streaking comets, you're my carry at Rambu. The two of them jump when Benson starts barking suddenly, end up cracking their heads together as the Bombini scrabbles down the hallway in a furious skittering of claws, footsteps and irritated Apian following after him. Ah, damn stupid mutt. Tubbo hisses without any real bite, rubbing at his forehead in consternation. Why, why is he like this? It's probably just my Tio Osmo. It's about the time he said he dropped by. Everything okay? Rambu asks around a wince, bright flare of pain doling out into an even throb. And Tebo nods, stepping back reluctantly as he shuffles towards the door with an easy wave. Yeah, he's just wanting me to look at some combine that's acting up, nothing major. Need any help? Puffy tells me I'm good at spotting melted wires. Rambu offers, and looking over his shoulder with a happy, dimpled grin, corners of his eyes crinkling. Tubbo says, brightly, Always. Now come on, let's go tell him the exciting news, Moroso. He holds a hand out, and Rambu more than eagerly steps forwards to take it, lacing their fingers together as Tubbo swings his door open. And Rambu is expecting to walk out into the hallway and greet Tubbo's uncle, to stand proudly side by side and explain what their braids mean to Sisson, probably get the life hugged out of him in the process. But what Rambu is not expecting is for Sisson to scream, scuffling commotion out in the living room, isn't prepared for Tubbo to shrink back automatically before surging forwards, ripping his hand out of Rambu's as he goes sprinting across the house, shrieking, Amma! Rambu stumbles forwards, heart in his throat, feels like everything is happening in quick flashes, sees Sisson on the ground with a plasma rifle pointed in her face. Blink. Second figure, ducking through the door, white-brimmed hat shading their face. Pearly armor, suns emblazoned on the shoulders. Hands raising with something in them. Blink. Tubbo going rigid. Tubbo screaming. Falling to the ground like his limbs, completely locked up. Body twitching, worst thing, most reviled nightmare. Did he just catch- Next blink, and Rambu is gone. Crashing into the enforcer with a feral howl. Takes them both to the floor driving knees and elbows down like he was taught, brings his claws slashing across the man's face with all the last flying, brutal savagery he's capable of. The enforcer screams and tries to buck him off, but Rambu knows how to fight, moves with him, has been here before, has done this before, has almost killed someone barehanded before, pulse roaring in his ears as he slams fist after fist into his face. There's blood everywhere, splashed across pale skin, Dripping off his claws, dripping slow, plip, 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 into flames that seethe and rage, and you've got to get him out. And it's hard to think all of a sudden, hard to breathe, smoke in his lungs and clouding his eyes. Where is he? Got to find him. You've got to. Can't let him burn. Can't leave him. You've got to. Something hard and vaguely cylindrical jabs Rambu in the gut, and he can't grab the splintering ends of his mind fast enough. Here's a faint click and then feels like he's been set on fire. Blinding pain spreads out from that section of his body, muscles going rigid, limbs refusing to cooperate, and he crashes to the side like a statue, completely immobilized 
as he jerks involuntarily. Tased. You've been tased. Rambu's able to haul together, at least semi-coherently. Can only stare on in mute horror as the enforcer gets to his feet with an agonized-sounding groan. Watches in frozen panic as those boots careen towards him. Rambu can't do anything to stop the foot that drives into his abdomen over and over and over. Ancients, it hurts. Make it stop. Void, help him. It hurts. Can't breathe. Can't, can't breathe. Stupid fucking voidling. The man snarls, kicking Rambu hard. Enough to break ribs, like he's trying to put a foot through his abdomen. Won't leave off, no matter how wretchedly Sisson begs. No matter how Ronbu chokes like he's dying. Only pulling up short when his partner snaps. Hey! Achika, knock it the fuck off. Go cuff the other one before he gets up. Why don't you fucking do it? Your face isn't filleted open. Archika bitches, but does move on after one last vicious kick. Leaves Ronbu gasping for breath with what tastes like blood at the back of his throat. Nothing but howling, screaming, panic in his head because he said cuff. He said cuff. Enforcers in Sisson's house. Hands always checking wrists for restraints. Your husband. And he said cuff. No. Please, no. Quel sonno per del regine. Stop. He's a good boy. Stop. Sisson pleads, sobbing desperately. And Rambu can't see but he knows neither officer really cares. Keeps frantically trying to push himself up, but his body isn't responding. But if he can just move, if he can just get that rifle, work, damn it, get up, you have to get to him. Tubbo underscore, you're under arrest for destruction of imperial property, aggravated terrorism, arson, and 16 counts of manslaughter. Archika recites in a bored tone over Sisson's frantic begging, like he couldn't care less. Like he isn't actively destroying lives. Get up! You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Well, I mean, whenever you can actually talk again. No. No, 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 no. This can't be real. This can't be happening. It's a dream. A hallucination. This isn't real. They're not. They can't. But they can. And you can't do anything. Get up. Move. Stop them. Help him. Get him out. Stop dicking around, Arch. We've got other shit to do. The other enforcer sighs, their apathy so staggering it's making Ronbu's blood boil. Needs to move, has to get up, has to fight. But his muscles are still spasming and he can't do anything. You are such a buzzkill, Ivala. Archika sighs, and it's the smallest noise, but it echoes back in Ronbu's mind like photon cannons discharging. Clicking clack of cuffs, locking over two sets of wrists. Strangling dread of helplessness. All right, up on your feet, B. I'm not going to carry you. Rambu's claws flex against the floorboards, hearing the noise Tubbo makes as they drag him upright. He's hurt. He's hurt. That's your husband. That's your person, and he's hurt. You're going to let them take him? Shot of adrenaline igniting through his veins, and he pushes himself up on shaking arms struggling to get his legs to work when a boot slams into his back. Don't do anything stupid, shithead. You're on thin fucking ice already. Ivala snaps, driving Ronbu back to the floor, and he lifts his head jerkily, glaring up at the impassive face staring back at him, can feel blood bubbling up through his teeth as he spits. G get your fucking foot off me. Do you have any idea who I am? Ivala arches a sweeping eyebrow to indicate that no, they don't. And it doesn't look like they really care, either. Grinds the sole of their boot down further so Rambu really gets the message. I'm big. You're no one. Sit down. Shut up. Know your place. But that's not true. He is someone. Was someone. And it's been good for practically nothing. But Rambu knows his father's name carries weight. Bites out as imperiously as he can. I am Ronbu Zithotad, third of my name, eighth child of King Zitho, ruler of the end and all things beyond. Now get off me. There's a brief pause, 
Just wait for the fear to set in. The stammering excuses. Get up, get him out, kill them both. But then Ivala's mouth twitches, and it's not in a good way. Oh, yeah. And I'm the fucking Empress of Nerox. Nice to make your acquaintance, your highness. They drawl. Long whiskers at the end of their snout flickering up in what has to be amusement, though it all quickly drops back into bland disinterest. You done? Then keep your fucking mouth shut before I decide to take you in as well. Growl, rumbling low in his chest. Rambu tries to push himself up again. Sees Ivala's eyes narrow, rifle swinging in his direction. Is trying to organize his thoughts enough to slip into a jump when a shaky voice he'd know anywhere cuts through his panic. Stop! Ronbu, just stop. It's gonna be okay. I'll be okay. Tubbo. Ronbu croaks desperately. Wants to see him so badly. Make sure he's okay. That he's not hurt. Get up. Get him out. Get those cuffs off him. But Ivala is strong, and his body is weak. The spasms are starting to calm down, though. Leaves him aching, but mobile. And one chance, that's all he needs. Get up, get that rifle, shoot them both. But then, like he knows what Ronbu's thinking, Tubbo demands. Just do what they say, okay? C can you do that for me, Maroso? Maroso, husband. Eyes crinkling at the corners, bead flashing in his hair. Good morning, husband. Love you, love you so much. And there's the sound of feet being drug across the floor, skipping and stumbling. He's helpless. You're helpless. Can't protect him. Can't save him. They're going to take him from you. Something ripping itself to shreds in Rambu's chest as he begs. N no! No! I'm not leaving you! I'm not Koltekno! He'll get it sorted. Tubbo orders. And there, finally, Rambu can see him. Being driven forwards by Archika, face horribly pale, hands bound behind him. Muddy green prison jumpsuit melting over his shoulders. Can't lose him. Going to lose him. And the poorly masked terror in his dark eyes makes Rambu's lower lip wobble. Tubbo's so scared. He's so fucking scared right now. This is his actual worst nightmare. Being bounded up, getting drug off. Locked away for a mistake he's so deeply regrets it's practically fractured his mind in two. And yet, no matter how much pain he's in, no matter how afraid he is, Tubbo still smiles for him. Though it doesn't reach his eyes. Tears gathering along his lash line. I'll be okay, promise. Just call Techno. He'll fix it. It'll be okay. I'm not leaving you. Please! Please don't do that. You've got the wrong person. You've got... Rambu begs wretchedly. Voice gone all rough and horrible. But the only people that care are the ones that can't do anything to stop this. And the last thing Rambu hears before Tubbo's shoved out the front door is... See you on the other side, Boo. No! No! Rambu and Sisson both howl. His getting cut short as Ivala presses down and restricts the airflow to his lungs. Makes him sputter out of breath frantically. Get up. Get up. Get up. You have to get up. But as soon as Ronbu tries, shaky arms propping himself up, move. There's a hard object tapping into the back of his head, and Sisson shrieks, horrified. I'm not going to tell you again. Ivala intones pressing the barrel of their plasma rifle in like they mean it. And Rambu wants to buck it, wants to spin around and snarl, do your fucking worst. But Sisson is sitting right there. Just watched her son get tased and drug out of her home. Doesn't need to watch another have his brains blown out. It kills him to do it. Has Rambu growling the entire time. Sit down, shut up, know your place. It's there with him. It's not here, kneeling under a golden boot. But he forces himself pliant. Claws gouging furious tracks in the floorboards. The rifle eases up, Ivala's foot going with it. But Rambu stays where he is, tendons aching with the need to move, to shred this person with his claws. But knows he can't. 
As soon as he so much as twitches in a way the Enforcer doesn't like, he's going to have a smoking crater in the back of his head. And there is so much blistering hatred streaking through his veins right now. Rambu is beyond understanding why he ever supported the Empire in the first place. Right. Well, sorry about the intrusion, but we thank you for your compliance. Ivala says, boot heels clicking across the living room on their way out the door, rumble of engines kicking on outside, and Rambu feels like he's going to throw up. Someone will be in to contact if there's a trial date, but given how old the case is, it might just skip straight to sentencing. How? How can they say that so nonchalantly? That's not justice. That's not equality. But Ivala doesn't miss a step. Swings the door shut behind them, politely, with a final, upbeat. All hail the Sun Empire. The latch clicks. And Ronbu is pushing himself up immediately. Muscles protesting violently, and he goes crashing back down. Screams angrily at how his legs shake. Lungs constricting tight, abdomen aching, heart cracking into a thousand bleeding pieces. Not real. None of this is real, can't be. Fuck you! Get up! They took him! Get back here! They fucking took him! G get up! Get up, you fucking useless- M Melly, Melly, stop! You're gonna hurt yourself! I, I know, okay? I, I know, but just stop! Sisson cries collapsing next to him in a swirl of skirts, shaking hands rubbing over his hunched back while Ronbu howls, keen ears quaking spastically when he hears the low whine of a speeder zooming off. No, 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 no. He's gone, he, he's gone. Ronbu shrieks. And the reality of that cracks into the back of his head like a blow, sends him surging to his feet. But without anyone to support him, Ronbu collapses in a heap. His knees connect harshly with the wooden floorboards. Impact rattling up through his teeth seem to jar the sobs out of him. And Rambu crumples over, presses his clammy forehead into worn wood, and just wails. Oh, ancients, oh void, they took him. He's gone. He's really gone. Didn't stop them. Didn't protect him. Husband, he's your husband. You let them lead him off in chains. Claws snarl up furiously in his hair. Tugging sharply, and he can't breathe. Thinks he might be drowning. Gone. Gone. He's gone. You lost him. What are you going to do? Neat. Have to get him back. Liquid fire pouring back up his throat. Feels like it sets his tongue on fire, leaking free into the air on every tortured exhale. What do you do? What do you do? Scared. Alone. Scared. Out of your mind. Alone. Out here. Think you're both going to die. No one's coming. Hey, kid. It's going to be okay now. Rambu forces his heaving body to stop, presses palms hard into his head, and tries to think past the dark, consuming maws of panic, because that's not true. S someone did come. Someone has always come, then and back further. Bright smiles and itchy trigger fingers, oranges and warm greys and fiery red. Cinnabar, gunpowder, and swirling embers. It's okay, kid. You're okay. Got your back. Always got your... Warm words are being whispered into his hair. Lyrical and sweet, trying to offer comfort. But Rambu isn't listening right now. Doesn't want careful. Doesn't want sweet. Doesn't want comfort. He wants blood. Can hear something else wheezing through his mind like the beginning, terrible notes of storm wind. Call Techno. He'll get it sorted. Echoes back through Rambu's winding hallways and he latches onto it like a lifeline. Uses it to help haul himself out of the sinking abyss of the sand seas. Comes up gasping for air, but with a clearer head. He knows what he needs to do. Get up. Get to your feet. Call Techno. Figure out a plan. Sort out this mess. Kill them all. And Rambu takes a deep breath. Lets it sit, scalding in his lungs, before letting it go. And swears embers go with it. Standing is hard. The electrical charge Archica hit him with really fried the nerves all along his front, making using his legs difficult. But sliding up onto his knees, 
Ranbu gives himself a minute before pushing to his feet. He sways. He sways, but he bends his legs. Remember being so wobbly on your feet? Hands on fire? Oppressive, wet heat. Done this once. Can do it again. Stays upright, through sheer force of will. M Melly, What are you-, you Sisson trails off in a jumping tone. And when Rambu turns around, jerkily, it crumples his heart up into a ball, seeing how hopeless she looks. Miserable tears pouring down her gaunt face. Ama, that's his Ama. Cares for him, and he cares for her, and they hurt her. They hurt him. They hurt you. And Rambu hasn't been a part of this little family long. But he's theirs, and they're his. And there is no force in this galaxy that's going to stop him from protecting them. Cocking his head back, Rambu remembers standing out in front of the court, having to have steel in his spine and the resolve to get things done. Hauls all of that back up, promising heatedly because there's no room for argument. I'm going to get him back. Sisson doesn't try to talk him out of it. Sits on the couch with a blanket he drapes over her shoulders, Benson half in her lap whining in time to the soft sobs hiccuping out of her chest. The worry is in her eyes, though, tracking Ronbu as he moves about the house, gathering all his loose things together. But she knows better than to stop him. Heard what Tubbo called him, has seen the braids. And she might not understand, and Ronbu can't even begin explaining right now or he'll break down. But it looks like she knows anyway a peculiar kind of aching sadness in her face, in the way a hand rubs one of her earrings, a gift from a husband she lost, too. There's not much she needs to grab before heading out, but Rambu at least gets properly dressed, is lacing his boots up, with his hand held cradled in between his shoulder and ear, waiting for the call to connect. He really thinks he's going to have to wait a while for Techno to pick up, maybe call twice is pleasantly surprised and a little caught off guard when he hears a gruff, Rambu, look, Tubbo got arrested. Rambu doesn't have any qualms cutting the blood got off right now, finishes his laces with a tight bow and gets to his feet, starts pulling his hair back. Enforcers drug him off somewhere, probably Diosurum. That's the closest Imperial holding center in this sector, but we have to get to him before- Just stop for a second, okay? I need you to listen to me. Calm down. Think rationally. Don't do anything- I am thinking rationally. My partner was just fucking arrested, and I'd like him not to be. Rambu snips, tosses his ponytail over his shoulder, and glares at the wall without anyone to direct it at. Unwarranted irritation bubbles under his skin at the smooth, even lilt to Techno's voice. But that's not really fair. Calm down. Calm down, he's always like this. Can't fault the way he talks. Remember. Big hand on your shoulder. You're all like my family. Do anything for you. Just calm down. Taking one steadying breath, and then another, Rambu forces the anxiety sparking high in him to unwind. Gentles his tone to something a little less hostile. Sorry. I I'm sorry. I it's just, I'm a little tense right now. Want to come up with a plan as soon as- I know, okay? Look, Phil and I are working on something, but I need you to- Listen. To. Me. Techno enunciates, like Ronbu's life depends on it. And there's something to his voice, in the way his words come tumbling out, frantic and panicked under the monotone. Something's happened. But Ronbu's train of thought gets derailed, briefly, by seething anger. Stay put. That's an order. You're not to leave Apaday unless I- Like fuck I will! Ronbu snarls. Claws cracking into the plastic casing of his handheld. Consciously goes to untense them, but they won't. Wrong. Something's wrong, not right. And Techno rumbles low. Yes, you will. I told you, Phil and I are working on something. It's just really complicated right now. Complicated? What's complicated about this? Go in guns blazing. Get him back. Have the numbers. Have the firepower. Why does he sound unsure? Why isn't he more concerned? What does he mean, working on something? How does he know already? Something's happened. And Rambu shakes his head harshly, thoughts all getting snared up and not making sense as he snaps. 
Tubbo just got arrested. Did you not hear me? If you think for one second that I- I know. And we're not gonna leave him there, but we just have to be careful. There's other factors at play, kid. Techno stresses. And is that a shake in his voice? Unwavering pillar. That's wavering. No, reading too much into it. Calm down. But it's weird, isn't it? He answered on the first ring like he was waiting, like he was expecting, like he knew. Look, I can't imagine what you're going through right now, but you've got to calm down. No reaction. He didn't react when you said Tubbo was arrested. Shut up. Calm down. He's reserved. But even then, there was no surprise. There was no further questions. It was like he'd heard it before. Everything we can. There's a lot going on, and it's not going to do him any good if you go running off trying to play jailbreak, okay? Phil and I are working on something. How could they be? How could they have any plan ready? This is the first they've heard of. Unless it isn't. Unless it's not. Unless they've been sitting by the phone waiting for you to call, with information they already have. Complicated right now, but I ain't leaving him. Not for nothing. Promise, kid. We'll get him back. We'll get him home. Other factors at play? Have to be careful. Reputation of one man. Only things standing in the way of unstoppable reactor. Heart of the fleet. Nuclear weapon pointed at your head. You're not going to win. Voices of the conquered whisper. In the end, Nerox never kneels. And it feels like things click together, and something in Ronbu snaps. Y you you fucking sold him out! He roars. Knows he put it together correctly when the line goes dead silent. Lips rolling back to bare fangs he wants to sink into a jugular. You. You fucking bastard! You b bastard, how could you? How could you- It's not what you- I, I didn't have a choice. Techno shouts back. First time Ronbu's ever heard him raise his voice. But it does nothing against the roiling, seething nightmare his mind has become. Turned him in. Gave him up. You've never meant anything. Family never meant anything. Fuck you! Ronbu screeches. Tail snapping behind him angrily. Feels out of breath and dizzy with how fast his blood is pumping. Takes a staggering inhale and howls. Fuck you! You promised! You promised him he'd be safe! I know! I know that! I- Techno tries to defend. And something about it just sends Ronbu over the edge. D do you? Do you know that? B because I don't think you do. You promised he'd be safe and then fucking sold him out! You- you betrayed him! Static crackles loudly in his ear nearly drowned out by how hard his pulse roars. Like the screaming gales of a sandstorm rising to block out the sun. And there's actual ice crystallizing on the edge of his teeth as he seethes, vicious and angry and trying to hurt. What did it take for you to cave? Power? M money? What did they offer to make your word mean nothing? How much does it take to buy the blood god to make him sell out his own people? You shut your damn mouth. It's so quiet, barely audible, but the undercurrent of dark, violent anger it carries makes all of Ronbu's hair stand on end. Kills the words ready to spill off his tongue, leaves nothing but stunned silence on his end. Don't pretend like you know anything. Don't pretend like you know anything that's been going on. Techno shouting again, and in his mind, Ronbu can see him standing behind his desk. One hand braced on the scratched surface, while the other clutches too tight around his handheld. Voice steamrolling down the connection. I've been trying to prevent this for weeks. Weeks! I tried everything I could, so don't say I don't care. Don't you ever say that! Y you sold him out! Rambu cries, hand wrapped crushingly around his handheld like a lifeline. Feels like he's spinning uncontrollably through the void. Something isn't adding up. This doesn't make sense. So hard to think past the mounting fractedness of searing retribution and fatal betrayal. A low growl rumbles through their connection. Dull thud of what's probably a fist hitting a solid surface. I didn't have a choice. It was either Tubbo or the Syndicate. He threatened the entire Syndicate, Ronbu. All ninety-something of you. I didn't have a choice. Bullshit. So you just... 
gave up without a fight? You're Technoblade, you don't give up! Rambu snaps, incredulous, desperate panic pounding through his veins. Because this is Technoblade, the greatest warrior in the entire universe, telling him he's afraid? No hope left? But you gave up! You gave him up! Coward! Fucking coward! So what if I am? Techno roars, stuns Ronbu into silence, has never heard this much raw, ragged emotion in his voice before. I am not invincible. I'm a person. One person. I'm mortal. I bleed. I can lose. I was faced with a shit, no-win situation, and I made the call that I did because I had to. No, you didn't. You didn't even... We could have fought. Rambu tries to argue, ears flicking back, hearing the humorless laugh that spills through the connection. It's desolate. It's hopeless. It's a man that's lost. It wouldn't have been a fight. It would have been a slaughter. You don't know that. We could have... It was the entire Fourth Fleet. Thirty galleons. Forty-five frigates. Against what? Forty-eight mid-class ships? It would have been over before it ever began. Techno growls, and Rambu's head spins. The entire Fourth Fleet. Why? Why? For one wanted criminal? Doesn't make any sense. Parts of what Techno's saying lost to the panicked confusion that eats his mind. Of the day. I'm responsible for what happens to all of you. I couldn't lead over ninety people to their deaths. Not a... Do you know why I'm leader of the Syndicate? Rambu can't get a grip to respond properly. Strongest person you've ever known. Infallible, unwavering pillar. Except... He's not. He bleeds, just like you. Is scared. Just like you. But Techno's not actually looking for an answer. Continues almost immediately. I'm leader not because I'm the smartest or even the strongest. I'm leader because I'm willing to make the tough decisions and live with the consequences. Swallowing roughly, Rambu tries to unstick his tongue, tries to find words, but there are none. Feels like he's been tased again, legs shaking pathetically as true, actual helplessness washes over him. Fuck, I didn't want to do it, Ronbu. You have no idea how bad this is killing me. Techno huffs. And fucking ancients. His voice is wet. He's crying. You're my family, would do anything for you, and he's failed. He's let you down, and it's eating him alive. I tried offering myself. <laughs> Figured I'm a bigger bag than old Pyro. But he wouldn't take it. He was going to get Tebo one way or another. But why? Rambu asks, broken, struggling to wrap his head around all of this. Fourth fleet. Why an entire fleet? Knows it. Knows it well. Patrols in the same sector as Anwil. Doesn't make sense. What's happening? Feels like he's missing the piece to some puzzle. I... I just... I didn't think the Emperor cared about the fire still. Why go through all this trouble for one person? Rambu, don't you get it? This isn't about Tubbo, not really. A cold chill washes through Rambu, lapping at his feet like curls of frozen black sands. And there's something looming on the horizon, but he doesn't want to look at it. Doesn't want it to be what he thinks. Searing green eyes, daysetter crown. Two-headed dragon, come home. What? Uh, I don't understand. This, th this is about the shipyard fires. This is about... No. It's about you. It's... It's always been about you. Techno exhales, exhausted. And something is ticking over in Rambu's mind. Parts sliding together. Fitting against one another in a way he doesn't want. Messages and letters and inky black seals. No way out, not really. All lined up in a row. Step forward when called. 
No way. He can't. Not possible. But it's a formality, going by King. It's a formality when in actuality he's something closer to... C closer to... It wasn't the Emperor who gave the order. All lined up in a row. Step forward when called. But he's been calling your name and you haven't come forwards. Face curdling in displeasure. Why don't you obey? First rule, one of so many. You live to serve your family. Tell him to fling himself off the palace. Your warrants just got bumped up. You never disobey your king. Never disobey your... It was your father. The handheld slips out of suddenly slack fingers. Makes a distressing noise as it cracks into the floorboards. But it sounds from miles away. Spirals down into the pit Rombus found himself falling into. Wind tugging at his hair, at his clothes. Icy fingers yanking at him as he plummets towards the ground. Told you, but you never listen. Should have listened the first time I called for you, and now look what's happened. The darkness mutters. Forms itself hands, claws, fangs, horns. Searing light of two green eyes staring down at him, unblinking. You always ruin everything. What happened is entirely your fault. All of it. The crash, the arrest, those scars. He almost died, and it's all your fault. Shut up! Rambu howls, fists his hand in his hair, and stands there, panting. Anxiety coursing through him like a plague. Pulse roaring in his ears as he screams, guttural. It wasn't my fault. It wasn't. It was your fault, you stupid bitch. I left, I left, and you won't leave me alone. Diseased fruit doesn't fall far. Know where you belong? Come home. Father whispers right behind him. And Rambu shudders, but he doesn't turn around. Clenches his shaking hands into fists and shrieks until his throat aches. He hates them. He hates every last one of them. Can see them all lined up in a row, sneering at him, and wants to gouge their eyes out. Take everything they've ever loved and rip it away from them. I left. Rambu snarls, teeth clacking hard together as he grinds them. Can still taste blood on his tongue, and for a second, it's not his. I left, and you fuckers won't leave me alone. C can't you take a hint? You all fucking hated me anyway, why do this? But Rambu answered his own question. Because they hate you. Because you left. Because you made them look bad. And he growls, low and rumbling, tail whipping behind him so fast it hurts a little. This changes things. This changes everything. Makes it unbearably more personal. Because Father wouldn't do something so overt if he wasn't serious. And Rambu hasn't looked underneath the underneath in a long time. But he gets the message loud and clear. Tired of your little game. It's over. It's done. See how far my reach is? Come home. Not asking you again. The fingers of his right hand clench and unclench. Always been his trigger fingers. Always been the ones to take the shot. And they're shaking. But he knows what would steady them. A blaster and a target. Hisses through his teeth. Fine. You want me to come back? I'll come back. Sisson doesn't ask about the screaming, and Ronbu doesn't explain. Bows low and offers apologies for the commotion. She hugs him regardless, all four of her arms around his back, antenna tracing over his horn, whispering brokenly in Apian. Be safe and come back to me, okay? And I don't know, Bo hasn't said anything, but if it's... If you're... I couldn't ask for a better son-in-law. What is he supposed to say to that? How is he meant to respond with words? All Rambu can think to do is tuck Sisson closer. Trilling, long and mournful as he rubs his cheek into her hair. I'll be home soon. He tells her, even if it's not the truth. Knows he's not coming back until he has Tubbo at his side and a blaster pointed at anyone that thinks he should be elsewhere. 
I'll be home with him soon, Mom. She sees him out the door, skirts ruffling in the cool morning breeze. And it's so jarring compared to the last time Rambu left her house, adrenaline high and jittery excited, racing after Tubbo through long, waving grasses. Now, he trudges along the red dirt road, alone, braid swinging free, bead on the end insurmountably heavy, silence and the memory of screams ringing in his ears. Rambu cuts across the barren fields to get back to the Asachi. Can't brave going into town. Knows they must all know. Avalar is small. Word'll spread fast, and he doesn't need scores of dark eyes brimming over with tears aimed at him. They thought they'd lost him before. Just got him back, only to lose him again. He thinks bitterly. Cresting a ridge, and thankfully finds their ship undisturbed where they left her. Angry, furious adrenaline whirring to life in his chest like engines starting up. But I'm going to get him back. Have a target, know where I'm going, never miss my shot. He's hardly ever been in the Asachi by himself, has never flown it, and the cockpit feels wide open and barren being in there alone. There's too much space. And he hesitates. For too long, burning precious time as his hand claws over the back of Tubbo's chair, the one he needs to sit down in. The one he almost can't bring himself to sit down in. It's so incredibly disconcerting to be in the pilot's seat, like he's intruding, like he's not supposed to be there. But Rambu doesn't have a choice. Goes through the takeoff procedure with shaking hands and hazy eyes, blinking rapidly at the message waiting for him on the HUD. Boss man, 1037. Stay put, that's an order. Phil and I are working on a plan, but you're playing right into your father's hands if you go after him. This is what he wanted. Don't give him the satisfaction. You're smart. I know you'll make the right decision. I have. Rambu growls under his breath. Engines rumbling to life. Sets the turbines spinning and starting their gentle song. Come with me, come fly with me, come see the stars. And as the Asachi lifts beautifully off the ground, he pecks out a quick, short message. Boss man, 1138. This is a family matter. Stay out of it. Rambu then blocks any and all lines coming from HQ for the time being. Make sure the Syndicate trackers are disabled, even though Techno will know where he's headed. There's not much he's going to be able to do to stop him anyway. Rambu is currently closer to Anwell than HQ. And if Father really has called the Fourth Fleet back, no one's getting through this sector unless he wants them to. It feels like his fingertips are burning off again, as he types Anwell into the autopilot doesn't trust his own lack of skills and the rolling mess his mind is to get him there in one piece. Stiffly, settles back as the Asachi jumps to light speed, arms crushed, bruising over his front, and waits. The flight won't be long, a few hours at most, but it gives Rambu plenty of time to sit down and stew and grow progressively more angry, keyed up as he cycles back through everything. It should have been clear from day one where this was headed, when Rambu got that first message on his handheld. When it was clear, they were going to keep escalating the issue. And yet, he never did anything. Rambu knows how controlling his family is. Understands that while they may have ignored him, they were all hyper-aware of each other. Had to know where everyone was and what their pawns were doing at all times. One of his siblings probably knew he'd left Nerox hours after the Asachi had jumped to warp. Might have sat on that information, waiting to see if it was useful or not. But the rest would have figured it out quickly. You established yourself as a threat. You showed them you could play their games. Father tells him from off to the left, looming half through a control panel, since Rambu's not in his usual chair. Of course they've been keeping tabs on you. Are you honestly so stupid to think they wouldn't keep an eye on you? To think you could get away that easily? Shut up. I just... None of them ever liked me. Never cared for me. I didn't think they'd give a shit. Rambu argues. 
keeps his head facing forwards as hyperspace streaks past. Sees father drift a little closer out of the corner of his eye. Doesn't matter if they rejoiced or not. You may have removed yourself from the board, but you're still a player in this game. You can't just leave. Yes, I can. Rambu interrupts fluidly and flexes his hands around his arms. No threat of claws, just feeling the muscle that's built up these last few months. I had every right to leave, and the only reason I'm going back now is to shoot my father in his stupid face and get my husband back. You can't be serious. Father demands, in a monotone that's edging up into incredulity. And unholstering his blaster, Rambu spins it around in his fingers, lazily rolls his head to the side and points the barrel at the flickering image next to him. He almost got us killed. Had my husband arrested right in front of me. His finger flicks the safety off easily. Comes to rest, grounding over the trigger. Itchy trigger fingers. Don't hesitate. Good shot, sharp eyes. He's a manipulative, lying bastard that let me and my siblings all try to kill one another for years. Probably knew I threw myself off the roof and never said anything. I should shoot him ten times over just for that. It would be so easy to take the shot. To put a smoking hole right between those dead green eyes. But Ronbu relaxes his hand. Snaps the safety back on and drops the blaster in his lap. Returns to staring listlessly out the viewport. But I'm not going to. If I kill the fucker, Resha becomes queen and there is nothing I want less than her bitch ass on the throne. So what's your plan if you're not going to threaten him? How do you expect to get the boy back? The specter asks. And Rambu scoffs at the thing's apparent confusion. Ancients, these things are dumb. And he's supposed to have made them? How pathetic. I never said I wasn't going to threaten him. My father just isn't afraid of death. Just like I used to be, Rambu thinks, slipping a thumb under the cuff of his jacket to trace over the bumpy lines of scars. And it wasn't a bravado thing, thinking nothing could take him down. And it wasn't about meeting a just end, knowing he'd given his life for a worthy cause. No. It was a freezing apathy, pale disinterest with life in general, thinking that in the grand scheme of things, it didn't really matter if you lived or not. He never used to be afraid of dying. Used to welcome it, the idea. And it's taken Rambu this long to figure out he'd rather live. But he's not sure his father has. Can't find a single memory where it looked like he was enjoying drawing air into his lungs. Or similar in that way. He murmurs. Remembers sitting out in the icy cold memory garden all night. Wondering if it'd be better to leave it all behind. And only now thinks about how many times his father used to catch him out there. Wonders if he was thinking the same behind those blank eyes. We... Fuck, we have that in common, I guess. There's a special kind of numbing hell, recognizing traits of yourself and your parents. Understanding that, that's where you got it from. The original source. Rambu knows he's not his father, and yeah, he can be just as cruel and manipulative and apathetic as him. But he's choosing not to be. To stop listening to all the hateful things they poured into him. I am not you. Rambu stresses, looking down at his speckled hands, at the red cuffs of his jacket, can feel the weight of his braid and the low, even thrum of the thing at his core. The star, the thing that loves him, the thing that is him. Flexes his fingers and relishes the way his tendons move. But I think you might be a little bit like me. The Asachi croons under his feet, faint vibrations that roll up his legs, through his bones, pulsate in time to the heavy beating of his heart. And watching the time to arrival ticking down, Rambu feels the heady nauseousness of anticipation wheeze to life. Dizzying spike of adrenaline right before a fight breaks out. 
asks the empty air. Do you know what terrifies my father? It's not a concept Rambu was very familiar with until recently. The thought that his father could be afraid. That he had to have things that kept him up at night. Bags under his eyes. Exhaustion weighing him down. No rest for men like me. The specter doesn't say anything. Likely because it doesn't know. Because it's a stupid, hollow thing Ronbu created and then gave nothing else to. It's a shell. A house with all the lights out. It doesn't know anything. But Ronbu knows. And they're not the same, but they're similar enough for him to understand. To see flashes of himself. His mannerisms, his neurotic tendencies, his fears. Echoed back from the generation before. He's afraid of losing control over everything. Rambu says, And nothing has ever been more true. Something he understands so very painfully. And it's the helpless fury of watching your partner suffer, of knowing others dictate the events of your life, spiraling lost and confused through the void. And Rambu flexes his fingers. And I'm about to show him he's not as untouchable as he assumes. The rest of the trip is silent. Gives him too much space to think. Mind spiraling continuously, end over end, worrying about Tubbo. About what he must be feeling. Going through. Anger and retribution building up under his chest like storm clouds on the horizon. We're good people. We didn't deserve this, any of it. Mambu seethes. Starting to get antsy, watching the timer tick down. Swears it has to be going slower, somehow. We both have scars. He's scared to fly now. My hands still shake. We'll never be the same, and it's all because my father couldn't concede a fight that was already over. Over before it began. Ronbu murmurs into the soft white noise of the cockpit. Broken handheld, a dead weight in his pocket. Empty comm list on the HUD seeming to stare at him accusingly. Eyebrow cocked, red eyes locked on yours. Used to be proud, now they're just disappointed. He swallows past, a tight pain in his throat. Thinks he might be realizing not every fight is one that needs to be won. That sometimes, the best thing to do is just let go, no matter how much it hurts. With shaking hands, Rambu tabs through the preferences on the HUD for messages, finds the blocked contacts list, and winces as he reopens the lines between the Asachi and HQ. He knows he messed up, said things he shouldn't have said, but he's always been weak when it comes to Tubbo. Any perceived threat to him riling Ronbu up to the point of madness. That doesn't excuse it, Ronbu thinks, chewing on a thumb and waiting for the messages to blow up, to have a hundred notifications of angry words on his screen. And it is, somehow, so much infinitely worse when there is just one curt little okay that says more than it has any right to. And he doesn't even know where to begin. It's my Karyad, my other half. They took him. The father that ignored me my entire life has now decided I'm worth his time. Scared. I was so scared. You're my idol. You're so strong. Didn't like hearing you weren't infallible. Just starts typing and hopes he finds what he means along the way. Bossman, 1202. Okay. 1745. I'm so sorry. It was really out of line to say all the things I did. I just get really stupid when it comes to Tubbo, and I hope it's not a problem, but it's because we're married? I don't know if that matters in the syndicate or not, but yeah. I know I'm disobeying orders, and I'll face whatever the consequences are. No complaint. But I have to do this. I know you think I'm playing right into my father's hands, and I probably am. But I've been playing this bullshit game my entire life, and I can win it. If you don't hear from me in a few hours, assume I'm dead, or detained. I understand that you probably won't be able to rescue me a second time. But I guess as a last will or whatever, just keep trying to get Tubbo out. Please. Thanks for everything, Techno. You're a good leader. I never should have said you weren't. Rambus smooths his shaking palms down his arms after he closes out of the messaging app. 
grows stiffer and more anxious the longer the silence drags on, stomach roiling and tying itself into knots. If Techno hates him, that's fine. If he kicks Ranbu out of the syndicate, that's fine. He'll be an adult about it. Own up to his mistakes and sit through the judgment that is doled out deservedly. You think he'd know better by now, but a lot of this has been two steps forwards, one step backwards. Feels like he learns something, thinks he's progressed, and then a stressful situation comes up, and Rambu backslides instantly. It's a panic response, he knows that. But what's the point of knowing things if they don't help, if you can't apply them? He can tell himself all he wants that he's doing better, and he is, to an extent, when he can think straight. But for a lot of the time, trying to navigate the healing process has felt like flailing around, unseeing, just hoping he stumbles to where he needs to go. And that's not helpful. And that's not constructive. And his friends have been helping him along the way, have done so much for him. But Ranbu can't keep relying on them entirely. They have their own things to deal with. It's unfair of him to keep using them like crutches. Not when there's other options. Not when there's others he could talk to. The thought still makes him nervous. Probably will until he actually does it. But a lot of things have made him nervous until he actually does them. It's finally at the point where Ranbu feels like he needs to take that next step. Make plans to move forwards. Somewhat confident and secure enough to ask for more professional help. After this is over, Rambu thinks, claws tapping a nervous staccato against his arms, wishes the anxiety would ease back and let his heart rest. But it's thundering, wild and out of control under his ribs, and he's just got to write it out. Once this is over, I'll find someone. After I get him back, maybe we can go together. Maybe it won't be so bad. But Ranbu has to get through this hellfest first, where every second ticking down feels like time wasted. And at this point, Tubbo is probably in a jail cell, and Ranbu has to make a mad dash for the bathroom before he throws up. Tubbo was in a jail cell. Tubbo was in a jail cell. And Ranbu can't do anything about it for another hour and a half, maybe longer. Depends on how long his father insists on being a fucking imperial asswipe. By the time the autopilot alerts him to drop out of light speed, Rambu is so tightly wound up his muscles are aching. Creak and crack like buckling plasti-steel as he follows along to memories of Tubbo's piloting, heart twisting up painfully. I'm coming, just please be okay until I get there. He whispers, ragged has to sniff hard as he follows the motions of easing the Asachi out of light speed. I'm sorry it's taken so long, but I'm coming to get you. I'm not leaving you. The blurry lines of hyperspace fade out, and sitting there, like a frozen, miserable hole in space, dark, craggy surface, weakly reflecting light, spiderwebs of teal ignited on the surface, no Imperial satellites here, Empire's most treasured possession, is Anwell. All right, you stupid fucks. Rambu murmurs. Unsurely wraps his hands around the controls and begins the approach to the planet, toes curling painfully in his boots. It's showtime. Reentry is rough. Tubbo makes it look so easy. But Rambu manages to get through the uppermost layers of the atmosphere in one piece, streaks down through wispy clouds, and just waits for the alert from ground control to come through, demanding he turn back or get shot down. But it never comes. His approach to Voidfall going largely ignored, in a way that doesn't scream of negligence, but rather expectance. Knew you would be coming. Preparations in place. Can't be surprised. Don't forget who your opponent is, Ranbu thinks, grinding his teeth together as Salel Niad races below the Asachi, a glimmering, poisonous net of shining lights he never wanted to see again. The sand sees a dark smudge on the horizon, voidfall rising above it all like a vile, cresting wave. Welcome home. Welcome back, Prince of the End. 
The city seems to sigh, rushing up under the Asachi as he dips lower, like it's coming in for a hug. Missed you. Did you miss us? Used to know you so well. The parapets snicker smugly overhead as he rounds the palace, looking for an open landing pad. Finally back. Finally where you belong. Don't leave this time. Massive stone statues of the forefathers boom, staring down at him disapprovingly as he lands. And as soon as Rambu gets a hand free, he flips the entire place the bird. Go to actual fucking hell, he snaps. Can already see figures popping into existence out on the landing pad. Hurriedly, powers the Asachi off and knows he needs to act fast. The more time his father has to himself, the more difficult he's going to be. We'll try and break Ranbu's resolve before ever meeting with him face to face. Ranbu slides down into the cargo hold, makes sure his hip holster is visibly empty, but tucks a blaster into the waistband of his pants, slides a thermal knife into his jacket sleeve, and it's muscle memory, keeping it in place without looking like he's armed. The frigid wind rushes in as the bay's doors grind open, and Ranbu zips his bomber up, starts wondering when this felt cold to him, when it felt more natural and right having the sticky, hot breeze of an apodé summer tangling through his hair than the icy bite of his home planet. Rambu wasn't expecting any of his family to be out here, and they're not, but it still wrinkles deep in him that even after everything, all the shit they pulled to get him back here, they still just sent servants out to fetch him like he's an uninteresting package. It's at least not the ones he despises. Handlers three and four curse them both to the void. But he does recognize one of them, and his mind starts working fast. Oh, fucking ancients, of course he sent her. Little right hand of the king. Poisonous snake. Not ideal. Can't waver. Don't bare your throat. Ranbu glowers, sweeping down the cargo ramp like an incoming sandstorm. And when he's closer, can more easily pick out the other handler? His ears perk up. Really? Really, they sent him with her? That's interesting. Did father not know they're... Ah, uh, welcome home, young prince. We've been eagerly anticipating your arrival. The shorter of the two says, Mirna, father's personal aide. If she's here, he's busy doing something else. Doesn't need her. Plans on making you wait. And faster than they can likely see, Ranbu zips into a jump. He comes out right behind Myrna, wraps a hand around the back of her neck to stop her teleporting, and brings his blaster up next. Presses the barrel against her skull as he demands, Where's my father? I, I, your highness! She stammers, playing at being afraid, but she's the principal aide to the king, meaning she's one of the best, most ruthless assassins in the entire palace has more black blood on her hands than runs through the entire court's veins. Rambu's not stupid enough to underestimate her. Makes sure he's got enough space in case a dagger comes swinging back at him. Tightens his grip to stop her fake panic and snarls. I'm not asking again. Where is my father? Myrna whimpers and does a very convincing involuntary shudder. But he recognizes the gesture knows she just shook a knife down into her left hand, and flips the safety off without any remorse. That quiet click finally gets her to go still, and they all wait in tense silence, Rambu not giving an inch, and Myrna huffs out an unamused laugh. My, how you've changed, your highness. So brazen, so violent. You've been keeping tabs on me, haven't you? so I'm sure you know I'm not really one for hesitating with my shots. Rambu murmurs, low. And where his fingers are curled over the back of her neck, he can feel her pulse pick up, eyes narrowing like he's just spotted a target. Want to take your chances, Myrna? Think I'll miss? I serve the king. I do not serve you. Myrna declares, tips her head back in a fatal display of loyalty, 
and she's not going to break. She'd be a terrible assassin if the threat of a quick and painless death would make her spill. But he's not working on her right now. Suit yourself. Rambu shrugs casually, goes to pull the trigger, and just like he was hoping, the other servant cries out. W wait Etenin! Myrna warns, and the handler clams back up, forces his face neutral, but Rambu caught that instinctual, raw look of pure horror, tips his head to the side, and regards Etenin with a slitted gaze. Gotcha. He wonders what they've all been told. If they know Rambu beat a man bloody, has shot people at point-blank range, and all of them already thought he was crazy. He wonders how much worse it is now. He wonders if he can use that to his advantage. Nestling his blaster a little further into Myrna's hair, Ronbu watches Etenin closely. And he doesn't react much. He's a royal servant, after all. But Ronbu has always been good at picking people apart. Rolls his head to the side and says, lazily, The way I see it, you've got two options. Either tell me where my father is, or I shoot your karyat in the head. The two of them both tense, and Etenin's eyes widen a fraction, terror clouding their bright green, and it's, how do you know? How did you find out? Never said. Never wear beads. How do you know? But that's Rambu's thing, right? Knowing everything? I've been gone a while, so I guess you've forgotten. Let me remind you then. Rambu croons, curls a finger back around the trigger, keeps his expression completely open, lets every single ounce of anger and resentment storm across his face, and finds dark amusement in the way Etnan's throat bobs. There's nothing I don't know. It looks like years' worth of panic flash across Etnan's face, like he's remembering every transgression that's ever been done to Ronbu. Everything he has to be furious over. Insane little prince finally snapped. And playing the part for once, Ronbu hisses. So, what about you? Think I'll miss? In the end, Etenin breaks. Ronbu gets what he wants, shoves Myrna forwards just as she's turning, throws himself backwards into a jump but isn't quite fast enough. Cheek getting nicked with one of her daggers before he completely dematerializes. Voidfall is rigged with electromagnetic sensors that set off alarms if someone teleports across them. But it's not infallible. There's chinks in the armor. Small, out-of-the-way places where servants and nobles sneak in and out. Ronbu spent the better part of a year ferreting them all out. Used it to corner people for leverage, threatening to get the leaks patched up and he's glad he never followed through on those threats. Myrna will have raised the internal alarms by now, have the guards looking for him, and they may know the palace as well as him, but they can't teleport like him. Mine's not fast enough at picking out coordinates. Likely only have a small list memorized. And that's where Ronbu outpaces them all. Because he doesn't just have a list memorized, he has the entire floor plan of Voidfall in his mind can overlay the longitude and latitude lines of the planet and calculate coordinates faster than the rest of them can blink. He zips over walls and into shadowed doorways, drops out into rooms he knows are abandoned to catch his breath before pushing on, winding his way deeper into the heart of the palace. The guards spot him a few times as he gets closer, try to grab him a few times, but all they remember is the child that used to flail at them, aren't prepared for someone that can fight back. Rambu's quick and light on his feet, doesn't pull his punches and knows how to move with a blow. Fights like Dream taught him. Fights dirty. Fights like he means it. Takes Ender twice his age with double the experience to the ground. Because they underestimate him. He keeps his claws in check, though. Doesn't want to hurt any of them fatally. Wouldn't have shot Myrna if it really came down to it understands that they're all in the same boat. Every living soul in Voidfall is at the mercy of someone, acting under orders they may not want to follow, or have been manipulated into thinking it's okay to follow. 
that this is all life is. It's easier to see when you step back, get the entire picture, all of it coming together like the most macabre of tapestries. So many lines of toxic deceit and subterfuge woven together, there's no way to untangle the whole thing. And most of them don't get the chance Ranbu got. Had someone care enough to offer him a way out? Patient enough to stay by his side while he's slowly been attempting to untangle all his own threads? Someone that's loved him regardless. Someone that's currently terrified and alone in an imperial jail cell, wondering if he's been forgotten. And so maybe he hits them all a little harder than strictly necessary. Not left you. Not leaving you. Please wait. Rambu pants, resting up against the side of a wall while his body shakes uncontrollably. Feels like he has frostbite setting in with how numb his extremities are. Everyone has their limits, and Rambu's reaching his, freezing fire burning through his veins, creeping up over his pearl. Have to be careful. Have to be careful not to shatter it. Can only make about one to two more jumps before he'll have to stop. He's close. He's so close, though. Still too far to feel comfortable teleporting straight into the meeting room. So he races down gloomy corridors. Dodges guards as best he can. Heart thundering under his skin, like the pulsing beat of engines running at full warp. Little further. Little farther. You can do it. Please, just a little longer. Rabu throws himself to the side, twisting around the armored hand that swipes out at him. Feels something twinge in his calf, but launches himself forwards anyway. Fiery, hot pain racing up his leg. That means he's torn a muscle, most likely. Or just pulled it bad. Ancients, it fucking hurts. But he's got to push through it. Has to keep going. Problem is, though, he hasn't been fast enough. The guards have had time to get messages around. The ones that meet Rambu now are prepared for a fight. Driven him back, limping, and one even manages to land a hand on him. And while Ranbu's able to squirm away, he's painfully aware his time is up. And backed into a corner, literally, mentally, emotionally, can't think, can't think, can't leave him. Ranbu does one of the stupidest things he's ever done in his entire life. Takes a deep breath and teleports straight into the meeting room. The furthest any Ender can safely teleport is around a hundred yards. Some memory of an instructor drones in his ears as reality fades out. Do not try and push beyond that. And then there's nothing. Blackness, as far as he can see. Feels like he's being crushed out of existence. But it's not an instance. It's not a moment. It drags on. It won't stop. If you do exceed your limits, crushing, sucking, destroying everything, the vacuum of interdimensional time-space will destroy you. You can't breathe in a vacuum, but it feels like he's screaming regardless, lungs tremoring and rattling and collapsing in his chest, bones splintering apart so much pressure everywhere it's suffocating, it's squashing him in between the fingers of reality, and he's going to die. This was so stupid. He's an idiot, warped out of existence, thinks he feels something crack in his chest. There's suddenly light and air, voices yelling and oh, thank fuck. Rambu tripping out of midair and crashing into a hard surface, mind reeling while he drags in wheezing sips of oxygen. Coughs violently as he's yanked backwards and slammed to the floor. He spits blood out of his mouth tries to breathe past the knee driving into his spine, pinning him down. Everything filtering into his ears, ringing and warped. Sees a pair of gilded boots step into view. Coiling two-headed dragon. Fucking bitch. No rest for men like me. Tips his head up and grins, feral. Surprise. Father doesn't smile. He never smiles looks down at Ronbu with something like disgust, brows all drawn up weird, and because he's not thinking, is incredibly pissed off and furious and out of his mind. 
Radu tilts his head and spits a mouthful of drippy black blood all over his father's shoes. That gets his face smashed into the floor by the guard pinning him. But Ranbu just cackles like a crazy person, tries flexing his wrists, and grunts when there's no give. Not ideal. Nothing about this is ideal. Tubbo's been arrested. Yeah, I know, we're working on it. Oh, hell, that actually hurt. Rambu winces at where his forehead struck the glossy black tiles. Thinks he's probably bleeding. Stops struggling, though, when that voice intones. Let him up this instant. But your majesty... What? oh wrong thing to say. Don't disobey orders. Don't disobey your king. Gonna lose your head. And sure enough, father's voice goes particularly icy. And Rambu grins, lopsided. I said, let him up. That is my son, and you will not treat him like a common criminal. Oh, is this how you treat criminals? Because honestly, one of the better welcome home receptions I've gotten. Rambu slurs as he's yanked up, goes unwilling and unhelpful. Plants his feet, though, once he's standing up, and tips his chin back, meeting his father's gaze head-on as he snarls. Oh, wow. Actual face-to-face -face and eye contact? This is my name day or some? Ronbu. What are you doing here? Father demands. And it's strange. Might be the mild head injury talking, but his voice really doesn't boom or carry all that much. It... it sounds kind of weak, actually. And Rambu shrugs his shoulders, taking a discreet look around the room. Oh, you know, figured you wanted to see me so bad. Shouldn't make you wait. All of the advisors are here. Big meeting, then. Trying not to act like they're watching. Fucking nest of cobras. What look like Sunfleet representatives staring blatantly. Important meeting, then. Good. This'll be good. And then, stepping up besides father, little gap in her front teeth, smile like an oil slick, moon-tied circlet, scuttle away, little shadow. No one wanted you. Stay out of my way, fucking bitch. Oh, Ran. What an unexpected surprise. Resha coos, tilting her head to the side and sending all her jewelry swinging. Long line of her caryad braid tucked behind an ear. Looks sloppily done. Nothing like yours looks like an obligation. Smile she gives him, devoid of anything but cruel amusement. Oh dear, you certainly seem like you've seen better days. What's the matter, little brother? Head bothering you. Is she... fucking serious? Rambu squints his eyes at her, because is that it? Is that the best she could come up with? That's just... that's just pathetic. He's heard worse from himself. From idiots he's passed on the street. From the actual, living version of a nightmare shot that one right in the gut. And Rambu snorts. Shakes his head a little to set his braid swinging. He left it free when he pulled the rest of his hair back earlier. And he sees the exact second Resha spots it. Nostrils flaring in what's always been her tell. Something truly nasty slipping into her gaze as Ronbu simpers. Hey, Ress, how are you? How are the twins? Decide which one you're going to let die yet? It's very brazen. It's a little out of line. But Ronbu has decided he does not care. Jolts of laughter punching out of his mouth, watching Resha try not to react. Hair bristling with poorly suppressed anger. How dare you! Don't talk about my sons, you little psychopath! Enough, both of you. Father snaps, and it makes Resha clam up, going blank in the way all of them were taught. But almost reclining back into the hold the guard has on him, Rambu rolls his eyes, kicks his feet back, and drawls. Oh, come on, what's a little playful bickering between siblings? Some casual threats, well-meaning fratricide. I said enough! Lurching forwards with more speed and strength than the guard was likely expecting, 
Rabu gets pretty close to his father's face before he's jerked back, snarling through blood-stained teeth. No, I don't have to listen to a single thing you say. You're not my damn king. You're not my fucking father. The meeting room goes dead silent, pressure dropping like right before a storm hits, icy winds rushing in to steal everyone's breath and leaving them mute. Dozens of eyes swivel unabashedly to stare at Father, at Ronbu, who tips his head up defiantly. Fucking try me. Think you're gonna win? Not a chance. Refuses to break eye contact as Father just stares at him blankly. They're all looking at Father to see what he'll do. How he'll reprimand Ronbu as a father? Punish him as a king? And without so much as twitching a single facial muscle, he orders monotone. Raki, please escort Ronbu back to his chambers. I'll speak with him later. Oh, I don't think so. Ronbu snaps, planting his feet firmly in case Raki gets any stupid ideas, ready to shift his weight quickly if need be, and narrows his eyes into something dangerous. I'm not going anywhere. We're talking now. Ronbu, I don't have time for Raineron. It's just one word, one name, one thing. But it does what nothing else has ever been capable of doing. Makes father speechless. Makes him emote. His mouth falls open the barest amount. Face twitching, incredulous look in his eyes. You know? How did... When? Not possible. And Ronbu sticks his chin out is possible. Not as good as you think. Not as safe as you think. Never paid attention. Never saw what I got into. Too many nights spent wandering the halls, trying to find information. Trying to find sleep. Trying to find a way to get rid of himself. Stumbling across a lot of things in the process. Bits and pieces, his mind filed away for a later date, but never forgot. And this was one of them nestled at the heart of the most secure archives he'd ever broken into. Your move. Rambu wants to mouth, but knows he doesn't need to. And wetting his lips quickly, Father finally breaks eye contact to look back at Ricky. Expressionless mask clicked back into place. But there's cracks. Give us the room. Those that know, don't question it, are quick to file out but the ones that don't linger suspiciously and prying. They're trying to put two and two together, connect the dots, understand what a story about a mythological doppelganger has to do with anything. Keep looking back and forth between where Ronbu's getting patted down by the guards and Father's unyielding spine. One of the guards takes his blaster and knife, but Riki lets go of his wrists and Ronbu flexes his fingers out, knows if it really came down to it. He'd win in a hand-to-hand -hand fight against his father. And that makes his head spin like nothing else. Terrible euphoria and pride clogging up his veins, just knowing he could take down the thing that's haunted him for so long. Loomed disapproving and uncaring over his shoulders since the day he was born. The meeting room is almost completely empty. Just Ronbu, his father, and naturally... Predictably, always there. Resha, hovering at his side. Claws tapping, one, two, one, two, into her arms. She's shadowed him ever since her court debut. Trained to be a carbon copy of what Voidfall expects from its monarch. Cold, calculating, ruthless. And Father has raised her well in that regard. But without turning to even look at her, he orders. You're dismissed, daughter. Excuse me. Resha asks, like she can't believe she's having to waste air on it. Claws stilling as they coil over her arms. Stares at father like he just up and started speaking actual gibberish. You can't be serious, father. Need I remind you that I am your heir? Learning how to maintain the realm is of chief import and you're depriving me of Resha. Leave. I will not ask again. Her mouth clicks shut. And it's really disturbing, watching the way her face bleeds into nothing. 
fist brought up to her chest as she bows formally. Words coming out of her mouth, but it's not her voice. It's not hers. It's no one's. Of course, honored father. I apologize for my insolence. Rambu shivers as Russia sweeps past. Back straight. Chin level. Keep your claws out of sight. Eyes even. Blank smile. No fangs. Hates to think he used to be like that. That he had to strip everything away and bury it deep. Little doll. Little shadow. Little puppet on its strings. How could you do that to us? Rambu suddenly finds himself asking. Watching the doors swing shut behind Russia. Guards stepping out after her and closing them with a muffled boom. Did you even feel anything, knowing what you were doing? Or did you just not care? Did you ever- How do you know? Father interrupts, coldly. And twisting back around, Rambu comes face to face with the king. All devastatingly harsh, commanding presence and narrowed green eyes. Hadn't realized how much his guard had been down until now. He's got that look on his face. Or, rather, the absence of a look. That means he's about to be difficult on purpose. So many lessons. So many different words all boiling down to the same point. Obfuscate. Talk around the subject. Never address it. But Rambu doesn't have the time nor patience to play this stupid game anymore. First off, you're not as smart as you think you are, he says, taking a step forwards, drawing himself up to his full height. All the files laid out for you, years and years of data and experiments, conclusions none of them wanted. Knows he has blood on his face, in his teeth. Spelled out in frantic letters, like the handwriting. They didn't want them to be true. Fabrication possible. Bears fangs in a nasty smile as he hisses. And secondly, I'm smarter than you ever gave me credit for. That didn't answer my question. Father says like he has any right to. Like he's allowed to stand there and demand things of Ronbu after everything. After getting him shot down. Having his husband arrested after abandoning him to the freezing cold winds? Let me explain how this is going to go. Rambu barks loudly, hands balling up into fists at his side. You're going to have my partner released immediately, or I'm going to become the biggest fucking problem you've ever had. Father stops for a second, eyes boring into Rambu, trying to figure out if he's bluffing. If he really would sell out their entire planet to Nerox. And Rambu glares back at him hotly. Anger and retribution and every screaming, terrible thing he feels for this place in his eyes. Never more clear what his intentions are than if he'd spoken them aloud. You would be dooming us. Father intones, as if this somehow falls on Rambu's shoulders. His fault that end crystals can be fabricated. His fault this has been hidden from the Empire. Rule number one, never hide things from your Emperor. Imagine the fallout if that information gets leaked. And it's always like this with Father. One manipulation tactic after another. But Ronbu won't take the blame for this. The guilt. Would have been content to live and let live. But then they got shot down. His cariad was arrested. All bets are off. And that's the only reason he's back here now, threatening to expose this information. Because his father doesn't know when to concede defeat. No. You would. Rambu seethes, mind extrapolating the situation out for him. Knows that it would drive Anwil into financial destitution if Nerox didn't wipe them out of existence for high treason. And Father's brows draw down over his stormy eyes. We'll destroy the files before you could ever get to them. There would be nothing to validate your claims. Ronbu scoffs, rolls his eyes because he remembers every detailed report explaining the process. Diagrams and schematics for equipment that would be easy to build. That would be easy for Nerox to mass-produce. 
completely erode Anwal's prominent standing in the Empire? I have an edetic memory, you know. I remember everything. I'll go straight to the Emperor and copy it over, perfectly. You won't be able to stop them. You would seriously betray your own people, your own planet. And for what? One lone little criminal? A band of thugs? Father spits that last word out, rolling off his tongue like poison, like something dirty and foul and beneath him. And Rambu bristles, jaw working back and forth while he tries to calm down, so close to launching himself across the room and tearing that bastard's throat out. Don't say that, don't you ever! Ronbu, have you seen yourself recently? All the damage that's been done to you? Father coaxes, attempting to switch tactics as he gestures at Ronbu's scarred hands, the craggly stump sticking out of his hair trying to turn him against the syndicate, trying to shift blame, sow doubt, resentment, paranoia. Why remain loyal to an institution that's only caused you pain? That's hurt you. It's madness. It's black tiles, black walls, black blood. Crying, screaming, crushing loneliness. I'll do what you want. Only wanted to make you proud. Never cared. Never was here only causes you pain? This place. It's this place. This hellhole. This fucking family. These fucking people. It's them. It's him. You've got to be fucking joking, right? Right? Rambu yells. And when it's obvious father isn't joking, meant that to be serious, he tips his head back and cackles. Oh, Ancients, you're insane. You're actually insane. What the fuck is wrong with you? I... No. No! You shut up for once in your void-cursed life and listen to me! He roars, cutting a hand violently through the air. Sit down. Shut up. I'm right. You're wrong. No use arguing. You have no right to act like you have any say in my life. N not after how I was raised. Not after you got us shot down. Not after you had my Karyat arrested. It's incredible to yell at him. To look him straight in the eyes and vent all the hurt and fury that's been eating away at his core. List it all out and hurl it back in his impassive face. Rambu has thought about it before. Late at night, when he couldn't sleep. Imagined spilling every nasty thing burning up his insides. Wondered what kind of reaction he'd get. Anything. Something. Finally a crumb. And maybe he's thought about it too much. Had built it up in his head to be this grand confrontation. Screaming, yelling, finally winning. So maybe it was stupid. But he's been hoping for something more besides father scoffing. Don't be ridiculous. That boy is not your carry- his words cut off in a startled choke as Ronbu fists two hands in front of his robes and slams him into the nearest wall, furious and hurt. And he's never once cared. Who are you again? Snarling. Shut up! Shut up! You don't know shit! How dare you! Say whatever about me, but don't you dare belittle what we have! Father's eyes flick to the side where Ronbu's braid hangs down near his shoulder, slitted pupils raking over the even plaits. Done with care, done by hands that understand what they're doing. Brows scrunching together minutely, seeing the bead at the end. One he doesn't recognize, but knows what it means. I'm yours, you're mine, and we are each other's. I'm only going to say this once. Ronbu seethes, leaning in, and is gratified to see he's the same height as his father. No way for him to loom over you. Can't make you feel small. Out of control, now you're in control. Either have Tubbo released from prison, or I'm going to hand over every document on end crystal fabrication to Nerox. You're serious. Father murmurs, still staring at the shining plastisteel bead slipped over Ronbu's hair. And why won't he look at you? Never looks at you. 
Pay attention to me. I'm right here. I'm right here. Of course I am. You crossed a line, you fucking bitch, and I have no qualms over- No, I, I meant you're serious about being Karyads. About- About that boy being your husband. And Father looks back at him, and something unpleasant squirms around in Rambu's chest because it's nothing in his eyes. Hollow stare. House with the lights out. How did you handle it when Mom... I didn't. And his hands start to shake. Ronbu lets go before Father can notice and latch onto it, try to pick him apart, steps back quickly and rubs his scarred fingers together, glaring from under hooded eyes. Of course he is. Why would I lie about this? Yes, I'm serious, you stupid dick. I didn't know. I... Why didn't you say anything? Father says. Stays pressed up against the wall where Ronbu left him. And throwing both his hands around, Ronbu shouts. Why would I ever tell you anything? I left! I, I was trying to get away from you assholes, but you wouldn't leave me alone! We're your family. No, you are not! F family is supposed to care for you! Th they're supposed to support you and treat you well! Ronbu braces a hand against his chest and flings the other out. Thinks about a warm, sunny little kitchen and four arms hugging him tight. Brilliant smiles, welcoming arms, gentle summer winds. Knows, now, he never belonged in this cold, frozen place. All you've ever done is ignore me, abuse me, lock me up in empty rooms and try to pretend I wasn't there. His eyes have started stinging, chest constricting tight around the sobs that are building growing tall in the sky, like banks of black sand clouds, ready to come rushing out of the wastes, blast everything to shreds. And Rambu shakes his head, refuses to let himself cry over these horrible people. The only thing I, I ever wanted was for you to care for me, to be proud of me. Fuck, his voice just cracked. Deep breaths, just take deep breaths. But it's all coming bubbling out, doors off their hinges, letting everything out. Going to let it all come to the surface. Good, it needs to. And he sniffles. But you couldn't even remember my name. You didn't even care that I was here. You didn't even care. I, I almost died. What? Why, that's not... Father trails off, brings one hand up to knead at his temple, eyes unseeing as they stare at the floor like he's working back through his memory, like he's trying to figure out what Rambu's talking about. I... I never would have let you hurt each other that badly. I... I made sure you were safe, all of you. And, oh, ancients, there's only one thing he could be referring to. And somewhere, Rambu had hoped he just didn't know. But he knew... He knew what all of you were doing. Knew about the cobras in your bed and the daggers at your back. And he never did anything. He let all of you torture and abuse each other for years. Made sure you were safe? How was that safe? How was that... Safe? S safe? Oh, fuck off! Red Kick used to slip venomous snakes in my bed. Tayson's arm got broken. Merte was hospitalized for a week. Zathir and Russia nearly killed each other when I was thirteen. I, I nearly killed myself. Rambu howls, and he's hardly ever said it in such plain terms. Digs trembling fingertips into the skin over where his heart rests. Finds solace in each beat. Love you, love you, love you. I threw myself off the fucking roof, and none of you ever said anything. Y you never even noticed. That was always the worst part. The fear that the specters were right. That it really didn't matter what happened to him. That no one cared, even a little. And sitting down to breakfast the next morning with no one saying a word felt like it just confirmed all his worst fears. I was drowning. Rambu chokes out. Voice gone wrong with the tripping exhales that rattle in his throat. 
sniffs hard, trying to find some shred of humanity in this statue his father's become. I was dying. C couldn't keep my head above water. You never cared. You, you've never cared about me, so I just, I don't understand. Rambu's full-on crying now, and he's ashamed he broke so easily. Flicks his eyes to the side and clasps shaking hands around the back of his neck. Thumbs stroking gentle shapes where it dips into his shoulders. Why did you try so hard to get me back? I, I, I don't un understand. Y you don't care for me. I'm last of eight, not even a spare. I'm nothing to you. I, I know you never wanted me. Who are you again? Last in line, last one on his mind. Waves you off whenever you try to talk with him. Sets you down, sets you aside, like he can't be bothered. Like it's a waste of his time, like you are... So why? Why did you do all, all this? Mambu cries, and shudders hard, remembering desperate sobs in the night, from burns he can't soothe. Coming awake, terrified out of his mind. Scars up to his wrists. Shake in his hands, watching his husband get arrested. Drug off. People he cares for so deeply. Hurt. Threatened. Not safe. Lower lip. Trembling. What did I ever do to you? I only wanted to be a good son. I don't know why you hate me. It echoes out into a frozen silence only broken by the hiccuping noises Ronbu's trying to muffle. He unlaces his fingers and scratches through the hair at the back of his head, pretending they're fire-bright hands, wishing there was another set cupping your face. So warm, so warm all the time, bead winking in the morning sun, Maroso, husband, love of my life, you're mine. Love you, sunshine. Love you so much. And he's gone. They took him. You didn't pre Do you know where your name comes from? Lifting his head slowly, Rambu flicks suspicious eyes to his father. And he hasn't moved. Looks like he hasn't even twitched a muscle. But Rambu sucks in a startled breath because... Oh, holy shit. His eyes. I picked it. There's such unimaginable sorrow in their depths, it might as well be a death. Shell of a thing. No lights on inside. How did you handle it? I didn't. Absolute, soul-sucking misery. How is he even still on his feet? How is he even still alive? Is he? Is this life? I... I wanted to name you. I wanted you is what's there underneath his words when Rambu looks. Feels like he's been slapped across the face. Sharp, stinging crack that renders him mute and terrified. There's... there's no way he's telling the truth. This is some sort of trick. A new angle he's working. Trying to manipulate you. Prey on your feelings. He's not. He didn't. You were so small when you were born. Had the worst habit of yanking on braids. At you, your mother, um, she had to keep hers pinned back for the first year. Father wheezes. Sounds like he's reading a eulogy. More emotion in the shivery cadence to his voice than Ronbu's ever heard. You used to try and pull the gems out of my crown when you were teething. Sawed through a dozen pacifiers. D drove the nannies mad. Why are you telling me this? Ranbu pleads, trying to figure out what the point is, where the lie is. But for everything he's been taught, all the ways he knows how to read people and worm into their heads, he can't find the lie. Can't find where the charade starts. Worries. It might be the truth. I... After everything, you can't just say that. You can't pretend like you're my father. And father has barely said anything. Relies on hidden meanings and understanding being passed on through empty words. He has never, 
and will never directly come out and say the words Ronbu has been starving for his entire life. I care for you. We'll skirt around the subject without ever really addressing it. Shadow on the wall. Something's there, but it's not enough. Maybe it would have been, in the past, the briefest glimmer of care and compassion. But Rambu needs more, has gotten more. He needs gentle touches spreading across his back, tweaking at his nose. My baby, my littlest, always cared for you. Warm arms wrapping him up tight and so proud, so brave. You're my son. Have a place with me, with us. Large hand on his shoulder. Quite the aim. Honestly amazing. Looks at you like he's proud of you. Like you're worth something. It's taken Ronbu a long time. But he's finally found people that will give him the care and support he needs. Enjoy his company for what it is. Enjoy him for who he is. And maybe that is what healing really is. The realization that he doesn't have to settle for things that don't benefit him, that have hurt him, and probably will continue to do so. And it feels like a massive weight is suddenly gone from around his shoulders. You have failed me in all the ways a parent could possibly fail their child. Rambu hiccups, but his voice is steady, remembers to hold his spine straight, and it's not because he's afraid of being seen as weak, it's because he knows he's strong. Nothing you could say will ever make up for that. It, it doesn't change anything. And out of all the things he could say, scathing and terrible, knows how to take people apart better than you. The manipulation tactics he breathes like you breathe air. Suspicion and paranoia straight from birth. Never turn your back. Molds people to get what you want. All Father does is stare at him with his dead, hollow eyes. Whispers softly. I know. He finally moves then. Grinding to life like he's trying to remember how to make his joints work and Rambu watches him stride past with a deep wariness, sees something bleed out of him as he goes to the head of the table. Father starts tapping at one of the consoles, back to Ronbu, so it's hard to see what he's doing. And before he can demand an answer, Father says, I accept your terms. Rambu's so floored, his jaw actually drops open. Figured he was going to have to needle and threaten a lot more than he did. And while he's struggling to find words, Father keeps going in that tone he uses for meetings. Official dealings. The one that lacks all emotion. In exchange for keeping Raynor on a secret, I'll have Underscore released from prison with a full pardon. I... What? Rambu stammers. Head reeling because all he bargained for was Tubbo's release. And a full pardon is... It's warrants dropped. It's a record wiped clean. No soot. No fuel smudges. Nothing hanging over his head. He'd be free. He'd finally be free. There's no way. Father has to be... lying. Bluffing, somehow, for some reason. Why would he? Doesn't make any sense. Because Ronbu thought only the Emperor had that kind of jurisdiction. I just... Can you even do that? It's so brief. Hardly counts as anything. But for a second, Father turns his head just slightly. Barest snatch of a cheek lifted in a sardonic smirk. Edges of a searing green eye crinkled. It's just a formality. But it's over before it began. And Rambu's not sure it even happened. It's already been done. Now you better be going. Deoserum is a good few hours from here. Father says, without inflection, still with his back to Ronbu. But, for some reason, the gesture doesn't read as dismissive. It seems like it's defensive more than anything. Like it's for his sake. Like he's trying to hide. That's 
it. You're just going to let me leave? Rambu questions, and nervously rocks up onto his toes. Half of them so desperate to be out of here, to go, he said you could go. But the rest lags behind, trying to make sure the way forward is safe, that there's no hidden traps he needs to be mindful of. There's no point forcing you to stay somewhere you do not wish to be. Father answers, inflectionless. Or he tries to. But there's something in his voice. Think you hear crying, on the edge of sleep. Shouldn't be out here alone. Get some rest. And Ronbu's heart lurches against his will. But I... Our paths have run parallel through the years. But at this last divide... There is no other course besides the final farewell. Father recites, and Rambu stumbles to a stop, because that's only ever said at funerals, when soldiers are leaving for the front lines. A farewell that is only ever uttered when you know, without a shadow of a doubt, you're never seeing that person ever again. He's telling me goodbye, letting me go. Is he trying to apologize? Rambu thinks, like the slow slide of sunlight outside big windows. Swallows hard, and hates the brief disappointment that flares bright under his sternum. Doesn't want words he has to find for himself. Wants to hear, I'm sorry, spoken aloud. But he's not going to. Knows he's never going to get the kind of verbal affirmations here like he's grown to realize it's okay to ask for. Knows now that it's okay to admit you need to hear things spoken plainly. That's not Voidfall, and that's not the people that raised him. It's never going to be. Because if a prince isn't supposed to apologize, what's a king supposed to do? Speak in half-truths, and none at all? Leave you to try and figure it out? Piece it together? Understand what he means? But this is it, then. This... Really is the end, then. A part of Ronbu doesn't want this to be the end, and he's disgusted with it. But it argues that it shouldn't be over, that he has to care. Tried so hard to get you back, that's your father. But everything else knows it's time to go. That in this instance, it's better to say goodbye. I'm never coming back. You're never going to see me again. Rambu hedges, starting to slide backwards on the balls of his feet, one step back and then another, finally moving away from the thing that's never been good for him, finally moving on, finally letting go. I hadn't counted on it. And that's his father saying that. Bags under his eyes, fingers under yours. Have you been sleeping? No rest for men like me. But then something settles across his shoulders. And when he turns around, it's one of the statues from outside the palace. One of the forefathers, a dead, lifeless thing, telling him, Safe travels. May the four celestials light your path. And it's uncomfortably familiar, because it's like looking at himself. Distorted, blurry image in a mirror. But it's me and I'm you. And it's not a perfect match. There's enough differences to know he's his own person. But watching masks come up, expressions slip away, all Ronbu can think about is how that was hammered into his head. Wonders who hammered it into theirs. He sat and learned at the feet of people who once had to have been in his spot, small and weak and too wide-eyed who had someone before them teach the words that they then seared into his brain. All one hundred lessons passed down from parent to child like the most horrible of inheritances. A generational curse. It's not an excuse. It's never going to be an excuse. There's not enough words in any language to excuse the things that go on behind Voidfall's abyssal walls. But it's an explanation. And it might not be the one Ronbu wants, but it's the one he's got. He's never going to forgive them. Can't. Knows he deserves better than that. 
But as the Asachi rises up out of Anwil's bleak atmosphere, breaks free into the welcoming arms of the cosmos, he thinks he understands. And wrapping a hand around the throttle, about to send himself streaking forwards into light speed, away from all of this, finally, leaving behind hollow green eyes and wicked sharp nails, heading towards the better future he's going to build, that they're going to build together, hand in hand, side by side, forever. Ranvu knows he can make peace with that. Thinks that curse might have skipped a generation anyway. Lesson one. You exist, and what a joy that is. There's not a single cloud in the vivid blue sky overhead. Never is during the summer on Apidae. And Rambo's seriously regretting not pulling his hair back into a bun today. Keeps flicking it off the back of his neck, where it rests hot and heavy. He's taking a breather before they haul the next support post into place. Stands leaning up against the two that'll flank where the front door goes, and eyes the space he has for a garden out front. Sisson doesn't have much of a green thumb. Four thumbs, and I don't even have one, Iho. But her sister, Yulia, does. Seems like she can make anything grow with a single cluck of her tongue. It's all about listening for what they need, Amorito. She tells him where he's following after her heels in a garden that's flourishing beautifully in the warming spring air. Sure, there's technique and knowledge, but that's not what matters most. Her hands are gentle where they turn stalks around, prune back sick leaves and flick off pesky insects, touching everything with such reverence. Care for it, and the land will care for you in return. It's a beautiful cycle, Melly. Most of the spring was spent helping Yulia in her garden, and learning the songs she sang while she worked, coming to understand how everything breathed together, about finding joy in such small, simple things, like little lime-green seedlings poking up through the soil and earth under his bare toes. Life is a beautiful thing, Ronbu thinks with a contented sigh, slipping his eyes closed as a sticky breeze ruffles past, tangling the long mess of his ponytail and sets his braid swinging gently. Oi, if you're done with your fainting spell, come help me with this, bitch. It's hot as shit in balls, and I want to be done yesterday. Snaps behind him in aggressive fondness, and Rambu turns with a snort, pushing his sunglasses up from where they'd slipped down as he fires back. You are such a crybaby, the smallest little whiner of a thing. I am the biggest man ever, so shut your stupid fucking mouth. Tommy grouses, but he's grinning while he says it. One leg propped up on the next post they're supposed to fit into place. Wraps a ratty sneaker into it for emphasis. Come on, up too, for my brains melt out my ears. Now, Tommy, that's just not realistic. Rambu sighs in mock admonishment. Shakes his head as if he's a teacher kindly correcting a wayward student. But then, when he gets closer, his smile goes a little sharp, and he coos. You'd have to have a brain first before it'd melt. Tommy lets out a loud bark of laughter, wings flapping open behind him and kicking up a brief swirl of wind. And he rams into Ronbu's shoulder, jostling him a bit as he cackles. You fucking dick! The posts are a good fair bit taller than Ronbu. Have to be, so he won't crack his forehead on the beams that'll span between them. But he and Tommy have gotten a system worked out. They get a line secured to the top of one. Tommy crouched down, muttering under his breath that the Navy has to be good for something as he loops coils of rope around. Popping to his feet with a cheery, Everything looks to be in top shape, sir, dick wiener, sir. At ease, Lieutenant Assmunch. Rambu responds with ease, not bothering to fight his smile as Tommy snickers. Gets in place to be able to grab the post once it's up, and nods to let him know he's ready. Tommy takes the end of the rope and with a big gust of air, snaps his wings down, 
propels himself up into the sky as he hauls the post up with him, and Rambu grabs it around the middle, guiding it into its spot in the floor. It slides down easily, perfectly cut so it matches up with the hole seamlessly, and for added security, but more likely because he just enjoys doing it, Tommy lands on the top with a loud thump that drives it down further. They've been at it most of the morning, taking advantage of the extra set of hands while they can, and Rambu's pleased with how much they've managed to get done. Most of the posts are up now. He and Tommy just have a few more to get through, and then they can start on framing out the roof supports. Which, that'll probably be an after-lunch project, given how miserably sweaty Tommy looks, and how light-headed Ronbu is. And as if on cue, there's a loud whistle right as they're working the last post into its place and Rambu excitedly lets go before Tommy hits the top of it, sends him tumbling off the top in a shrieking mess of spastic wings. Rambu knows he's fine, despite the loud protests at his back claiming otherwise. Doesn't care right now anyway, because there, standing in the middle of the house, smiling at him, is Tubbo. Half his hair's pulled back in a fluffy little ponytail, carryad braid hanging free behind his ear, dusty pair of overalls with patches on the knees, and a whole ring of tools clipped onto a belt loop, and he's never looked lovelier. Bounding across the cement foundation of the house, Rambu scoops him up into a hug, spinning them both around wildly, and feels Tubbo's wings flare out excitedly. Tubbo laughs loud and delighted, arms going over the back of Rambu's neck as he knocks their foreheads together, antenna flicking out while he sings, Ciao, Stelle. Pomerishio, Helwin. Rambu says happily, headbutting him softly. And Tubbo giggles, bonks him back a few times. Actual sunlight in his smile when he says, You hungry? I brought lunch. Starving. Rambu smiles back as he lets Tubbo drop to his feet, catches something flashing in the light, and reaches out flicking a claw against one of the earrings Tubbo's wearing. Hey, you're not supposed to have these on for two more days, mister. Oh, piss off. What are you, the marriage police? Tubbo laughs, eyes crinkling up, dimples in his cheeks, loveliest thing you've ever seen. And he shakes his head to dislodge Ronbu's hand, sets the earring and his braid swinging. Need I remind you we're already married? This is just like... Extra marriage. Bonus marriage. The laugh that comes bubbling up out of Ronbu's chest is heart-achingly lovely, airy and happy, and filled with so many wonderful, hopeful things. And he cups Tubbo's cheek, thumb dragging across smooth skin and shiny scar tissue. Oh yes, can't wait to stand up at the altar and ask for your hand in double, triple, extracurricular marriage. Dunno. Sounds pretty good to me, Marosito. Tubbo grins, smugly, nuzzling into Ronbu's palm because he knows how much Ronbu likes that nickname. Hubby. So simple, so sweet. Melts his heart right out of his chest every single time he hears it. Which is entirely unfair, and something Tubbo has used to his advantage many times in his quest to get his way. Leaves Ronbu fuzzy and stupid and willing to agree to most anything. Before he can respond with something that's equally as endearing and affectionate, there's a too loud voice knocking them back into reality. Oh wow, look, Tommy's still here. Tommy is still here and is being subjected, which is a right dick move, fuck you in advance, and is being subjected to this mush fest. All while being forced to do manual labor and fuck you, dickhead. You refuse to get us a wedding present, so this is your penance, Tubbo declares loftily, only stepping back enough so he can twist and cock an eyebrow at where Tommy's sputtering, wings flaring out. What? I, you, I, I asked you, and all you would tell me was to steal you an end crystal reactor, which is a very reasonable requ- No, it is not! Tommy howls and throws both his hands in the air. Drops them back down not a second later to gesture at them emphatically, wings flapping behind him in theatrics. 
First time I get shore leave in years and I'm drug out to fucking hot as balls Noahsville. Shanghai'd end up building you a house. All while you make gooey eyes and hang off King Mushball over there. It's been a more regular thing for a few months now. All spending time together like this. And Rambu was nervous out of his mind meeting Tommy for the first time. Felt like he barely knew the guy. But he really shouldn't have worried. Being around Tommy is one of the easiest things. He's wicked sharp and unfairly hilarious. Is good at bouncing off a variety of people, so there's never a dull moment. And the way he and Tubbo interact is utterly fascinating. Their relationship is very bizarre. It's one of the most well-meaning, deeply caring, highly aggressive friendships Ronbu's ever seen. Seems like they do more heckling and yelling than anything else. But if you actually listen to what they're saying, there's no denying how much they mean to one another. You're just jealous you don't have anyone to be a mushball with. Tubbo crows, hooks two arms around Ronbu's waist and drags them closer together. And Ronbu swings his tail up, settles it in its customary place across the small of Tubbo's back, grins when he feels fingers stroke along his side adoringly. Not true. I'll have you know, Tubbo. But I turned down a date with a very attractive woman to come to this stupid thing. Tommy lies so obviously. Rambu doesn't know who he thinks he's fooling. Watches as one of his hands comes up to cup his chin, grinning in what he probably assumes is a suave and dashing way. I'm the hottest commodity back in Nerox, in the entire fleet. I'm drowning in women, Tubbs. And Rambu's new to their well-established dynamic, has been a little afraid of stepping on toes. But he feels like he's finally hit some solid ground. Shitty grin, already tugging his lips up as he exclaims excitedly. Oh, wow. I didn't know you could drown in the absence of something. Tubbo laughs so hard he snorts. It's practically doubled over, hands batting at Rambu desperately while he wheezes. And there is no greater feeling in the entire world than knowing he can bring his caryad that much joy. Love you. Love you so much. Rambu thinks helplessly. Swaying closer, and Tubbo looks up at him, giddy tears springing to his eyes. Cheeks and tip of his nose a light pink, and it's never been clearer that he loves you too. My Karyad, my sunshine, my husband, my forever, and he loves me. Ugh, you two are actually the worst. Tommy groans, but he's laughing too. And maybe it's not so hard knowing what to say to him. Nothing in his eyes but overwhelming affection and the deepest devotion as he gripes. Shit stains and assholes, the both of you. Absolutely terrible. You're perfect for one another. We are, aren't we? Ronbu thinks, walking up the hill they're building their house into. Tubbo's right arms wrapped around his left, picnic basket in his free hand, and Tommy animatedly telling some story while he walks backwards ahead of them. Warm contentment melting through his chest as Tubbo drags fingers lovingly across his arm. And it's perfect. Not in the sense that they're flawless. Far from it. There's too many cracks and dips and rough edges. But somehow, some way, they fit neatly together. Two little puzzle pieces that have never belonged anywhere else have only ever been meant to slot next to one another. Doesn't matter if they make a coherent picture or not. The three of them flop down under the shade of a massive tree crowning the hill, Tubbo pulling out the containers of chilled pasta Sisson made the day before. Fresh summer berries Ronbu could eat entire fistfuls of, and thermoses of sweet, iced fruit tea that hit the spot like nothing else ever has. They eat and crack horrible jokes, tell stories and kick at one another, Tubbo drops his head to rest on Ronbu's shoulder, and Ronbu props his chin up in between his antenna, grinning at some dumb thing Tommy's telling him. Below them, rolling out like the most beautiful of paintings, is Apidae. All warm hues and verdant greens, yellowed grasses waving in the sweet wind that sails down over the hill, tangling through Ronbu's hair and tugging at it softly. 
set of fingers tweaking at his nose, pulling gently on an ear. Hello, darling. Hi, Mama. He whispers back. And she smiles at him through the sunlight that filters down through the leaves, sends dappled patterns racing across the backs of his hands, dancing over skin that's as speckled and mottled as the sweeping arm of a galaxy. Ranbu takes a deep breath and loves the way his chest expands with it, lets it go and watches how it ruffles Tubbo's hair, shorter strands slipping free and hanging down into his laughing dark eyes. I love you, Ranbu murmurs in a quiet moment, all of them dozing a little in the heat of the afternoon, bugs singing around them like the rise and fall of engines at full warp, and Tubbo sleepily snuffles into his shoulder, laces their fingers together, and whispers, I love you too. And he means it. Means it like Ronbu's wanted him to mean it for so long. Enough so that they're going to stand before the community in a few days and have their clasped hands bound together in colorful ribbons. It's kind of funny, actually. The memory of Tubbo tells him, where they're out on Sisson's front porch, early morning quiet and soft, dewy with a refreshing chill. But it's pretty similar to the hair braiding ceremony. And Tubbo's hair is always a huge mess in the mornings, but his braid never is. It's pristine and well taken care of, clearly loved. Just like Ronbu's. Guess we're not that different after all. Ronbu huffs once, in breathy amusement, head really starting to loll to the side as he nods off. Pleasant, rewarding ache in his muscles from a morning of hard work, pulse even and slow, matching the slow beat of the world around him. It's been nice being on leave. Personal leave this time, not medical. A choice. It was their choice this time. Has given Ronbu a glimpse into what their future looks like, Quiet mornings and slow, soft flow of life, finally calm, finally some peace. They'll keep flying for the syndicate for a little while longer. Call of the stars burning so brightly in both of them it's impossible to ignore. But they'll be coming back here at the end of the day, landing the Asachi in the hangar Tubbo is building, walking back to their home on a red dirt road hand in hand. Techno was surprisingly fine with the whole arrangement, acting tough about it up front, jokingly demanded an invitation to the wedding and extra cake as recompense, and then almost cried when Tubbo told him, like we weren't going to invite you anyway, boss man. As far as Ronbu's ever seen, Techno's only ever cried once, and that was when he met them in Hangar 6 after Ronbu got Tubbo back from Diosarum crushed Tubbo in a hug so tight something popped in his back, slapped Ronbu upside the back of the head before dragging him down as well. You are the two stupidest sons of bitches in all of creation, he sniffled, shaking hand on the back of Ronbu's head, betraying how scared he actually was. But it started to relax the longer he hung on to them both. Bet he'll cry at the ceremony, Ronbu thinks, giddy on the edge of sleep, slowly sliding down into it with hazy, half-formed ideas and plans flickering at the edges of his mind. There's still so much he wants to get done, that he has ahead of him, plans and ideas that stretch out before him over the course of many years, and he's looking forward to all of it. There's a long list of planets he wants to visit, things he wants to see, Plants he wants to grow and take care of. Thinks he and Tubbo might be able to reverse engineer Raineron themselves. Make their ship the most beautiful, fastest flying thing in existence. Teal star trails burning long after her as she cuts through the cosmos like a comet. But for right now, he's sleepy. Weighed down by a good kind of exhaustion and a belly full of food his caryad pressed up against his side, soft exhales hitting the side of his neck. Someone 
who he thinks is becoming one of his best friends, dozing not that far off. Ranbu sighs, settling back, eyes slipping closed on his home, this place he loves as assuredly as the stars, as himself, and presses a free hand into the earth, really, genuinely happy he's alive. You are a good person. You deserve to be loved, to be cared for. You deserve to be happy. A note from the author. And here's the end of our road. I hope you've enjoyed the journey. This has been an actual wild ride for me. Somewhere in the middle of writing this, I suddenly got popular very quickly. And it's been an interesting experience. I've met so many new people because of it. Had some really good laughs and seen some truly amazing art that y'all have made. Because of me and my story. It's wild. I've been told I'm an inspiration. That people aspire to be like me. That my works have brought them comfort and solace. And it means more than you could ever possibly know. Sure, it's not all been great. I don't talk about my feelings much, and there's no need to focus on negativity. But I will at least say this. I'm proud of myself. Parts of this have been absolute shit, and drug me down in the worst way. But ever the most stubborn thing to exist, I bowled through it. I have my friends and family to thank for that. For encouraging me and helping me get through everything. I wouldn't have been able to do this without you. I know Deterra isn't everyone's cup of tea. It's dark. It's upsetting. It takes a real hard look at a lot of horrible things. But if that's all you're getting out of it, you've, quite frankly, missed the point. This is a story about healing. And it's not easy. It's not pretty. It's messy and hard. But it's so worth it in the end. Because there is light at the end of the tunnel. There is a sunrise waiting for you at the end of the night. This story is a love letter to myself, to anyone that's struggling through things of their own right now. I hope you understood what I'm trying to tell you. I hope I understand it one day, too. Life can be incredibly painful, but it can also be incredibly beautiful. And all we have to get through it are each other. So be kind. Be loving. Because at the end of the day, that's all we have, and it has to count for something. See you on the other side. Helen